it's time to go. A new season brings new faces, new drivers, and new storylines. Welcome to the future, to Rennsport, and to the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. It's a great start from Benneke as he leads them into turn one, and three wide behind into the opening corner. The speed yellow machine doesn't cover that inside line, and that's Kazabon. Contact with Benneke, and now to the lead goes Patrick Holtzman. Lead it side by side once again for fourth position, and this time a little bit more contact. Can the red line car box out Loner? That will be the move on the exit of the arena section. That is absolutely beautiful from the flying French. Oh, it's contact. Oh, teammate on teammate drama. Why slightly further behind? I mean, goodness gracious me, the long way around. Is he going to allow Nuning off and Benito to squeak their way on through? With a defensive line being taken by Wojciech. Big moment there for Kazimon, straight around and into his teammate. He sends Yuri Toman round. As a round goes one and it's Benneker. Morris Lona two wheels into the grass and to the inside. goes two for two at the Hockenheim ring. Patrick Holtzman, finally a race winner on Rennsport. Thibaut Kasvon winning in the penultimate round of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. And now we've got our grand final locked and loaded. On the 6th of April, a champion will be crowned. The stage is set, 12 drivers remain. It's time to crown our 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland champion. Five incredible races have all led us to this, to Hockenheim, to Spa and Road Atlanta, where our new champion will rise. Hello everyone, welcome along to Porsche's Twitch. So delighted you can join us. Our Judah Kanki party joined alongside, as ever, by Lewis McLeod as we get ready to go racing. And Lewis, this is such an exciting day that you made the trip out to Germany to be a part of our season finale. But let's talk about the fact that we've had the time attack qualifiers, five races that have all built us up to here, where 12 drivers remain, the championship points and the championship prizes are ready to be paid out. Yeah, we know that Max Benneke is definitely the favourite for the day, right? That's that's obvious yeah, based on what we've seen throughout the season. Did have a couple of dramas, though, at the season finale in the online. Uh, well, I think it was all online, you know what I mean? The, uh, in the main season where, uh, unfortunately, Benneke had a couple of problems back in Road Atlanta. wonder if those uh, might be playing on his mind coming into the final race of today, which will be very, very important indeed. Especially given that, you know, he talked to you and said that Road Atlanta, one of those bumpy tracks that he wasn't necessarily looking forward to. Let's talk a bit about the format, right, for this championship, how we've gotten to this stage, because we've had two races per event round, but only one of those races have ended up paying points. Now, that's not the case. All three races are going to matter. All three races will have qualifying, and you'll see only the top three are eligible to be paid out from our prize pool. Hockenheim first, Spa second, Road Atlanta third, and all over the space of a couple of hours. Yeah, indeed. We are I count to how we've done the online races where we've done uh, you know two uh, two races basically uh, in the same evening on the same circuit. Now we're talking about three different uh, qualifying sessions, three different uh, tracks they'll be racing at. It's going to be quite difficult to to jump basically from doing a race at the Hockenheim ring to jumping straight into uh, Spa, straight into practice, straight into qualifying, then straight into the race. It, it, you don't have much time to get back used to it again, which uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure these drivers are you know, they're, they're plenty capable of doing so, but it's not necessarily going to be easy. And, but, you know, winning a championship should never be easy. And I think that's where as well, you know, the fact that Road Atlanta is the, the last race. If Max Benneker, who's been so dominant this season, is going to be our champion, he'll have to do it in a track that is not necessarily feeling the most confident. Let's talk, though, about well, what has already happened, right? Because 12 drivers have made their way to this stage across a five previous races. We went to the streets of Singapore, Road Atlanta, of course, most recently. But before that, three races at Monza Spa and the Hockenheim Ring. We've reset the points effectively for the 12 drivers that compete so that they are, you know, they take some advantage in Lewis based on the regular season, but they then still have to fight for the points here today. And so you look at how it fares out right now, five points, the difference between the two Mouse drivers at the front. And I think being realistic, it's probably between them with just three races to decide this. Yeah, of course, these points, but it, it, effectively from the uh, from the main season, it's as if Max Benneker has got, already got a race win on the uh, on the books, on the points. He's already got 20 points. Uh, and then Morris already has a second place because he was second place in the uh, in the standings in the 
main season. You say it's between the mouths, but I, I, I've got to say, um, yeah, if we look back at the uh, yeah, back at Road Atlanta in that main season and compare the pace and consistency of Thibaut Caswell and Yuri Toman, uh, RHG might have something to say about the domination um, of, of Mouse in this championship. That said, it still very much feels like, uh, at least from a fair point of view, it's Benekas to lose. Yes, Benek is to lose and uh, 12 drivers shown on screen does seem as though only 11 will hit the track when we get underway. But that's how they are going to start in terms of points. Of course, three races decided and the first race at the Hockenheim ring. It's where we started the season off, Lewis. Talk to us a little bit about that first race, right? Because it was the, the first race in this championship on a new platform. We came in with some uncertainty, some uh you know, not really being sure who would be the favorite and Max Benneker straight from qualifying really made his presence known. Yeah, he, uh, he took the clean sweep. He took a pole position. He took a race victory in the in the first race, which is basically a qualifying race uh, and then took the race victory in the uh, in the main race that followed. And to be fair, for the most part, it looked fairly um, I mean, there was a bit of pressure coming in for the likes of Yuri behind, but for the most part, was was basically just driving around uh, in, in complete control. He'll be aiming to uh, you know, to have that once more here, but I say I, I get a feeling the field might be a little bit closer than Harry racing at the start. Of this, and they got used to this car now. They're they're, they're, they're building um, their knowledge in the platform, which to be fair, quite a lot of these drivers obviously they've raced in ESLR one, so fair enough. But it's more about knowledge of this car, which have not really raced this platform, with the exception of this championship. Yeah, they, you, many of them will be familiar with the GT3 cars, not necessarily this GT3 Cup machine. But as mentioned, three races, the first of us taking us to the Hockenheim ring. Let's go dive into our track guide to learn a little bit more about where we started the season off, where our grand final kicks off as well. Well, let's take a look at the first circuit we'll be visiting this season. It is, of course, the Hockenheim Ring, a fantastic, fast, technical challenge uh, for these drivers to master. In the first round of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland, opened back in 1932, the 17 turns and roughly 4.6 kilometer circuit has plenty of challenges across its three sectors, the first of which being relatively the shortest and the simplest, and the second with the most overtaking opportunities, and the third is arguably the most iconic among all of those. The Nord Curve here, was added back in 1966 when the circuit went under its first real major change. The Parabolica and the run into the hairpin was added back in 2002 when it underwent its most recent major change. Same with the arena section there. And of course, this run through Mobile One as you prepare yourself for the stadium section. And of course, that run into the Saks Curve. Iconic corner in the world of motorsport. And certainly the circuit has its fair share of challenges for our drivers to deal with in the first round of the season. And I think we did see, in some ways, the first race settle into a bit of a rhythm. We didn't see too much passing up towards the front. We did see a little bit of RG bargy towards the back of the field. But I think today is maybe that day where we should expect Max Benneker to be challenged just that little bit more. Lewis, they're all racing on a fixed setup as well, something we should bring uh, to the forefront because often we talk about how drivers dial in the car to really find the most speed, to make it the most comfortable for the driver. Not something you can do here in this championship. No, which you would say that normally within the um, you know, within, within these cup cars, there's not too much that you can actually tweak on setup, but the small things you can do uh, by adding in a little bit more understeer, even, you know, because the, the, the cars, they can be, they, these, these are cars that are pretty tricky to drive at the best of times, you know, the way they kind of float through the corner. So those small setup changes that you would normally be able to make, they do make a large difference. And the fact that you can't make those changes, um, that it is, you know, set for everyone, it, kind of, it, it, you know, it, it works in the favor of some and not for others, which is just how it goes. Um, you know, it means that it's, it's an equal playing field. You all just need to jump in and get used to the car. If the car doesn't drive the way that you're used to, well, it's now time to change your driving style up a little bit. This is why uh, you know, drivers like Max Benneker are so good when it comes to like, these fixed setups championships, because he has a fairly versatile driving style, which you can move, you know, set up, set up, regardless of what, what you've got given. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tremendous skill. Yeah, and I always say, right, that whether it's fixed or open setup, the cream will usually rise to the cro uh, top because you do end up seeing the drivers that are most adaptable in open setup racing, able to figure it out in fixed setup competition as well. It's a blockbuster day on Porsche's Twitch, by the way. Not only do we have the three races here and our grand final in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland, but don't forget later on today here on Porsche's Twitch, stick around for the final round of the Porsche Esports Super Cup as we get to see, will it be Sebastian Job or will it be Diogo Pinto that becomes the second two-time champion of the series. We're being spoiled for Porsche action today, aren't we?
It'll be Sebastian Job. Uh, you think so? I did, yeah, it? no, I, I really like Diego Pinto, um, but no, it'll be Sebi. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. But then, to be fair, I'm not going to tune in because I'd be sick of hearing more of you on this broadcast. So uh, it's fine. Turn it. Oh, I'll watch it. I'll watch it muted. I'll give you that. No, no, no. What you need to do is get the special version without commentators and just with the Porsche engine noise turned up to 11. There you go. Is there a special version that has that? Uh, we can organise something just for you. I was going to say you that? can't you can't tease that and then not deliver. My goodness, That's qualifying qualifying going to be starting very shortly. Let's talk about how qualifying works in these uh, races because it's a lengthy session, Lewis, and we've seen a couple of different things happen. One, drivers build themselves up, bank collapse one by one, then slowly ramp up the the speed. The other thing that we've sometimes seen as well, I think back to Benica in particular, is struggles to actually set a valid lap time that's representative of his pace and takes him till the end of the session to really make his presence felt. Yeah, the important things to um, you know to note in this, I've got to remember, because this, this is the problem with like, commentating on lots of different championships and stuff. Uh, you always forget which which series, which rule happens in. Uh, this is what I'm pretty sure the tires reset when they cross the line. Um, yes. So you're, you're if, if you, Account to how you would normally do it, where you'd spend a couple of laps warming up your tyres uh, and getting yourself in the window, which in these kind of cars normally would take two or three laps. Um, in this, by the time you get to the line, well, you just you just push. Um, it is what it is. Uh, you can also see there's 11 drivers. You, you, you mentioned this. There's 11 drivers. We are going to name and shame Enzo Benito. Um, where are you, fam? Where is he? He knows I got a picture of him as well that will end us. That's true. Break. As we so say it's going to end us in Razor Career, it's actually not going to do anything except uh, make us all reminisce about times that we got to spend together. Playing oh. a lot of track mania, Jamie Fluke versus Enzo Benito. Boy, was that a battle. Uh, it certainly was. Um, and I can't remember who had the upper hand. Jamie Fluke was certainly slower than Enzo Benito, but he put in all the work, and uh, I think he ended up <laughs> the faster the, the, the times. So, but yes, Enzo Benito is not here. Um, also, Patrick Holford, who we'd normally expect to be here, is also out due to a back injury from carrying mouse for the whole season. There, I stole your bit. Oh, I stole the joke out of my, out of it, my it, mouth. It's, it's just not true either. It's not, it's not true. Uh, so instead, by the way, Flavio Tusit, along with uh, Joachim Thunder, uh, sneak into this finale. And we've seen them in a in the last couple of rounds of the regular season. And so we had talked about them, actually, that the battles at the back of the field being important for the couple of points they were fighting for. And uh, they are they are here in this race and fighting for their share of our prize. Well, there's the speed yellow of Max Benneck. I mean, he has been a speedy Gonzalez over the course of this season. So I have 12 and a bit minutes left to go in this qualifying session as they work out of that hairpin and you'll see the cars all out on track at the same time but at least based on what we've had previously this season they're not really having any draft impact with one another Lewis so that's something else to consider is that they don't really have to play too many games like we might see at certain Formula One qualifying sessions. Oh, are you talking about earlier on the day? Or something? Oh, fair enough. Wait, was there um, actually shenanigans? Oh, I no, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't remember. Oh, I fell asleep. Because um, sometimes that qualifying is not interesting. This one can be, though. Uh, and Max Benneker in that, like you say, distinctive speed. You know, he's made it his own, let's be honest. Because um, he has been in it all season. I don't recall what the time was, but I don't think we actually had them back in Hockenheim at the start of the, uh, the, start of the season. Uh, I don't remember what a good time is around here. I, I don't know if a 44-0 is one. I thought it was somewhere in the 43s. We'll have to get our remember. CSI books out to try and figure that one out as Benneka looks relatively calm as he runs to the line. Remember, three races, three qualifying sessions, so we have to get uh, the mindset switched across of race and qualifying pretty quickly. That was quite wide out through turn number one, but you are allowed to take some liberties with the limits onto the brakes, down into first gear to get the rotation and instantly shift it back to second to ensure no wheel spin from those rear tires as you try and demand the torque and power out of the engine and run yourself onto the strain. You just see him bounce off the gear uh, rev limiter as well as he shifts through the gear. Lewis, this is one of those things where you're just trying to eat every little bit of speed that you can from this car, and it's always interesting to see these onboard perspectives where the best really make their time. Slightly wider the hairpin, though, from Benneker. And the thing is, is going slightly wider the hairpin, this is what you're basically saying about the, you know, getting the perfect line. Sometimes running a little bit wider the hairpin, you actually take a little bit more speed through the corner. You can carry that speed off the corner. So whilst it doesn't feel like a great line, um, it can sometimes be a little bit faster. You can see how much you clobbered the curb uh, going through the arena section as we depart that now up towards Mobile One. 
Um, I kind of agree. It's not looking like the tidiest lap time for Menica. His previous one didn't count. Um, and so it is Thibaut Casal at the top of the standings on the 37.995. So my 43 guess was uh, completely off. That's fine. I'm not talking about it. It's okay. We don't need to look into the CSI books, it turns out. By the way, uh... Thibaut Kazabon, hopefully not in wide boy mode, but if he is, can you imagine how difficult it would be to pass him here through this final sector? It's very much a one-line track through those final couple of corners. You can see the hands at work just balancing that car through the final corner as it tries to rotate around underneath the driver and Benneker's lap time. Is it going to count? No. Once again, invalidated lap time, and I oh, think it's all turn it. one, isn't it? He's way wide again there at T1. Uh, at least it was certainly what it looked here. Let's um, uh, see on board and over the top of Thibaut Kazbon. He seems to be a little bit wide as well himself. I don't know. I mean, he's almost always it's T1 around here. Oh, sorry, that, was, Never mind. that was wide boy Moritz Lohner as well. So uh, he's apparently got the, the wide curse that Thibaut Kazbon has uh, been under for the rest of the season. So I wonder if that's helped him find his way to the top because we're starting to get some times onto the board. Yeah, and again, we're not 100% sure as to how much quicker they can go. It'll be once we see a good lap time from Benneke, that will um, that will put us in well, right in the uh, in, in, in kind of like the, the idea as to what the pace is right now. Uh, I'd say the lap times we're seeing from Lerner and Casamon are pretty solid, but the fact that Benneke still not got his car over the uh, over the line to set a time is it's a little it'll be concerning um, for them there's still plenty of time left to go in the session but you know if we get into the final moments then uh, yeah be really up against it what was the circuit that he couldn't get a lap time onto the board on was it was it Orchard Road streets of Singapore and then eventually he did go to the top then I can't know. See, I can't remember because I, thought, I don't think you can't really exceed it. Singapore, uh, uh, ultra brave. No, because he kept hitting the walls, which we wasn't that invalidating the lap times. I can't remember. I think it might have been. No, I think uh, I think there was another one as well that he kept invalidating his lap time on. Not even inspired. Honestly, I don't really remember. Well, Road Atlanta oh. wasn't easy for him. Let's just remember he had some technical issues there that I'm, you know, I'm sure he's hoping have been put to the side. He doesn't have to be thinking about them too much. Still waiting for Yuri Toman in the mid green entry to find his way onto the board. You can see another driver really having to work the hands as they cycle back towards the line, break the timing beam, and will it be an actual valid lap time this time from the RHE driver? It's to fourth, but what's the margin? That's the real question as we wait for the time to update. There we go. Okay. Left side of the screen comes on through, and Benek has found his way to the top. 37.909 then, so got about half a tenth faster than Norris Lerner and Thibaut Kazbon behind, but... Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a bit nervy uh, in the middle there for uh, for Benneke. Again, he is the the points leader in this. He was uh, you know, the, uh, the points leader in the uh, in the main season, so obviously he carries that in. He has 20 points to his name, so he's uh, 15. Uh, he's got what five points clear of uh, of Morris Lerner, who's on 15 points. Uh, he's on our screen right now. I wonder what Morris Lerner's feeling about his chances of uh, of, of winning here. Oh, okay. it's kind of one of those ones. Right? As much as we we know that yeah, Morris Lerner's a mouse driver. That Benneke is a mouse driver. You're driving for yourself, though, in some of this. You're driving for your own prize money. Yes. Uh, this is, again, a driver's championship, and they all have to fight and represent themselves. So I, I, uh, th the one thing that we know for sure, rule number one of racing, never hit your teammate. And so I think that's ultimately, if it's going to be the two mouse drivers at the front going back and forth for the, the championship itself, that will be the one thing they have to abide by. But if Thibaut Kasbon, Yuri Toman, and even maybe Christopher Dambitz, Mateus uh, Schmiedel's got the potential to bring himself into the contention as well. I mean, as it sits right now, less than two tenths covers those front six cars. To run a track like this is really not speaking of much. No, indeed, especially when the slipstream to take you down into the um, into the hairpin on that first lap as you go around the parabolica. The chances of moves are um, that they're, they're, they're quite high as we ride on board with thin boy Thibaut Casabon. Uh, obviously with a little bit of slipstream in here. By the way, I am being told by Max Benneker's biggest fan, the biggest fan of Max Benneker, horses and poison. You see here in chat. Um, uh, well, there you go. Now you know who is the biggest fan of Max Benneker. Uh, you're absolutely right. It was Orchard Road. I can't remember why, though. But it was uh, when you hit a wall, uh, a certain amount of contact apparently invalidates your lap time. Um, so, yeah, it was wall contact. I completely forgot that's how it worked. I guess it makes so sense. So you can't wall ride, so that makes sense. Mm, yes, good point. You can't pull a Ross Chastain. But... That's so true. <laughs> Uh, the, the reason why I wasn't sure as well is because, yeah, the Road Atlanta definitely wasn't great for him either. So, 
at that point, let's be real, he had already basically locked himself into the finals. We talked about how he didn't really need to show up, but he did for the experience. To... Also, probably more importantly, Lewis, when it comes to Road Atlanta, given that the fans were the ones that chose which of the three tracks that we're racing at today, it's probably a good thing that he went and saw what the racing was like. So today he doesn't come in unprepared. Exactly. It's all about uh, that. The main season was all about preparation, even though obviously the points slightly carry over, even if he wasn't there for that um, that last round, he still probably would be the points leader coming in. So he'd still have the same amount of points. It wouldn't really have changed for him um, with where he is uh, in those uh, in, in the standings. Tebow Kaz went out through the final corner uh, as we refocus here on the Hockenheim ring. Uh, any improvement from him? Yes, he does. He goes up into second position, but obviously not closing in on Benneker. He's set 37-8-1-4. That's a decent time, and the margin now grows even more at the top where it's thousands behind him. Yuri Toman's jumped up to second, but he's still f full tenth off with five minutes left to go in this qualifying session. Remember, the first of three races as we get set to crown our 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland champion. There is Moritz Lohner, 13 thousandths right now off of Thibaut Kazabon. There's another 30, uh, 37 thousandths behind Yuri Toman. And these are small, small margins. You can see as well how much they try to maximize around the track. Lona straddles the curb with two wheels on the left as they work their way into the hairpin. Every little bit of an advantage they can find, they will make sure they find. And we talked about colors. We've talked about these wonderful liveries that all of these drivers have been competing in with the re respective Porsche colors. Uh, I'll call it out very quickly right now. But the top three in the championship, Lewis, get a special Porsche Carrera Cup uh, Deutschland eSports livery added to their Rennsport account to celebrate their accomplishment. Pretty cool idea, I feel. Yeah, indeed, we get the, we get to see those things a little bit later on. So I, I, I've already I've already taken a little cheeky, sneaky preview of them. They are quite nice. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's quite similar to the livery they've got with some subtle changes uh, to it. But it's kind of one of those ones to really hammer home how good you've been in this uh, in this championship the fact that you've been this strong this potent and you know to, to, to have won or some of this but then obviously yeah yeah the, sure the prize money on top but i've always said there's there's some of those special things that you can win whether it is a custom livery whether it is a trophy or something they, they sometimes hold a little bit more weight morris learner through the final corner any improvement coming in from the number 20 riviera blue no improvement no, I don't think so. Although Thibaut Kazabon has closed the margin down to Max Benneker. Those liveries are one on one, one of one, and there's only three of them, again, for the top three in the championship. So pretty cool thing to be able to then show off any time you jump into a race here on Rennsport as we ride on board with Yuri Toman. He doesn't go down to first gear, interestingly. Alex to keep it in second. Again, they're all on the same setup, and their tires reset every time they cross the line. There's no tire shenanigans at play here today, uh, at least in here, the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. See him just bounce off the limiter in fifth. And watch that delta as well, Lewis. I think that's one of those things where Alex Albon had come out a couple of weeks ago and said that he had to turn it off in real life so that he didn't get caught out by that. Sometimes in the sim world, we get inundated and flooded by data, and I think that delta is one of those things that personally i wouldn't want to know about no it is why i actually absolutely despise having deltas on the dashboard there's nothing you can do about that for the most part um but like on, on my heads up display in the game generally speaking in a qualifying session i will turn the deltas off i'll turn all the i'll turn basically all of the information off um as best i can problem is when there is a uh, you know, delta on your wheel you're on, on the dashboard you can't really turn it off you will always see it and it's always you know orange is bad green is good um and so at the moment it's not looking so great for yuri toman's uh, improvement that will be to his own time by the way rather than uh, the time of benneker so uh, i don't think there's going to be an improvement from yuri toman on this uh, time so i don't think he'll be passing his teammate uh, but i think it'll be good for rhg to be in second and third in this race thus far Especially, right, because on the run to turn one, they'll have both of the sides of the track covered and they can probably work together and slot into line. And after this flick through the fast right, then they can start to fight as that was a little bit wide by Yuri Toman. Not sure if that's going to invalidate the lap time or not, as within 90 seconds left to go in the session, drivers will know these are the laps that will count. The tires reset every time they cross the line. We've called that out a couple of times. What that means is they're not really worrying too much about having to, to calm the tires down after a, a push lap and go again after a cool down lap. No, every single lap is a push lap. And so far, you can see 59 thousandths. That's what the rest of the field is trying to find to deprive Max Benneker of leading us to the green to kick off this grand final. And I think Benneker leads us to the green. I'm just calling it right now, Lewis. He wins the first race. I don't think anyone can touch him here at the Hockenheim ring. 
But yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think if he wins the first race, I don't think anyone's really going to be touching him in the uh, in the championship, uh, considering he's already got 20 points onto the books, courtesy of the main season, and uh, you know know how strong he is around here. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. The fact that he's got two R8Gs behind him will be a little bit concerning um, for Benneke. Did he have the pole position at Road Atlanta as well? He did, didn't he? He did, but then he had the yeah. technical issue basically technical issues, instantly. Yeah. So, yes, we, um, we won't dwell on that too much. No, but the thing is, is my, my point is, is that that means that he's, if he gets pole position here, he's had pole position in every single one of the uh, Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland uh, qualifying sessions. He's always Ooh. been at the front because no one has beaten him. The only person the only, the only person that's beaten him in a race that he was actually in was Holtzman. And that was because of this guy here, Toman, who absolutely destroyed him at turn two. Just a little bit of contact. Yes, I, I yeah. can confirm, by the way, it was 36,000 that Benneke got pole at Road Atlanta. And as the clock strikes zero, you can see Yuri Toman instantly grabs a sip of his water. As Benneke once more continues that streak, 100% successful in pole positions so far this season. And an ominous sign for a driver that's very difficult to pass in the type of cars that we're dealing with. And Lewis, we're a couple of moments away from getting the race underway. Drivers will be getting their instructions to go down to the starting grid. I think Benneke is going to be feeling very, very confident with how things have started off. The thing with Benneke is that his starts are usually quite good um, in this championship. They have been you know, historically quite good. And that's important because turn one's a real pin point if um, you know if, if, if Yuri Tome and if Tebow Kazwon get a good start uh, they will try and send it a little bit down at the first corner obviously then you've got a plenty of runoff fair enough but you know you can get some uh, so, well, you, you, you'll get caught out of doing it with uh, track excursions limits and stuff I, I think the important bit for the two RHGs behind is to instantly get into the slipstream and keep as close as possible to Benneke and they must go on the attack down to the hairpin the first time if they leave it a little bit later than that Benneke can run away and the way it plays out is if Benneke can win both of the first two races, he sets himself up very comfortably for the final race. It's not going to be guaranteed by any means, but it's just about knowing going into Road Atlanta, he'll be a little bit more comfortable. Here we go then. Take a look at those qualifying results. See how they'll line up. Benneke Kazab on front row. Toman Lohner then behind them. And keep an eye out for Christopher Dambitz, the privateer entry. That's really going to be trying to fly alongside Mikel Schmiedel, who ends up being the only Team Redline representative here today. Lucas Matea for Brute going to be down in seventh with Nico Nuninghoff, Lucas Egger, Joachim Thunder, and Flavio Tusit rounding out the 11 drivers. And you can see a bit of a separation. Three at the back going to be fighting probably amongst themselves. And then a lead group that might break away and very close margins draft gonna keep them close lewis yeah exactly uh it's gonna be a big part around here it's you know it is a circuit that we know the slipstream is quite important because you don't get too much uh, dirty air is not too much of a problem with the exception of that final that third and final sector as you run through the arena section then through member one of the sax curve like that's the section where it is a little bit awkward through the first uh, and for the most part of the second sector you don't get that much dirt here. You do get a fair amount of slipstream. So uh, that's why I'm saying about getting straight on the attack. A little bit of a uh, sweat bin wiped from the brow of the speed yellow of Max Benneke. So uh, maybe he is feeling the pressure. To be honest, I would be surprised if at the moment his heart rate was too far above the likes of 80 or 90. I mean, his hair looks pretty perfect right there. So I don't think too much stress. Oh, uh, are you becoming his biggest fan now? Uh, no, but I'm maybe, maybe going to rival our, our fans in chat. What I will say about Benneke, it was great to see some of those trophies over his shoulder. And of course, you know, he is our defending Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland champion as well, albeit that last season ran a couple of years ago now on iRacing. So, you know, it's a slightly different story coming into the season, if we're being honest with. About two minutes to go before these drivers get their instructions to, to get down to the starting grid, to get ready to go racing. I'm nervous right now, Lewis. I can't imagine what it must be like for one of these drivers knowing that all of their fighting in the previous five races doesn't really mean much. It's the three races today where the prize money's really on the line. But they all knew that coming into this. You know, they were all well aware that uh, you know the, the the main season was was more about learning, about understanding, about how to race this car, about how to go on the attack in this car. That was what the main season was about. This is now where you, you use that experience and you use that knowledge. Yuri Toman, who's typically so good on his tyres. I mean, you've got to remember with Yuri Toman, right? Uh, um, um, through, through the most part with how good he's been on his tyres, in this championship, I distinctly remember in the first round, he was actually not great on his tyres, um, which they do have to worry about in the race. Their tyres do not get reset every lap during the race. They have to manage them, uh, more so from a heat perspective. They don't really have tyre wear. Um, it's more the, uh, the, 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 the thermal degradation they've got to really worry about on these cars. 
If you're wondering what time the finale of the Porsche Esports Super Cup is going to get underway, at least 6 p.m. UTC, you can join us for the Porsche All-Stars. It's around 7 p.m. when we'll focus on the Super Cup and their qualifying will already be in the books. We'll get ready to go for one of two main races. It's going to be quite exciting. Plenty of action here. And uh, if you're in Stuttgart, which I'm sure there are a handful of people maybe watching on the Porsche's Twitch chat uh, that aren't already at the Porsche brand store. We're having an in-person event there and in between each of our races uh, here in this grand final we'll be throwing it out to the Porsche Commander Esports team that's out there and part of our grand finale. I guess I'll put you on the spot right now, Lewis, then as we get ready to go. Benica. Yeah, I was going to say, is there anyone but Benica? <laughs> uh, I, know, I, know where you, I know where you're going with this. I know the question. Um, I think so. I think it is going to be Benica, but but Come on. It doesn't mean that it has to be. Because the thing is, is when you look at Thibaut Caswell, when you look at Yuri Tobin, and to be fair to Moritz Lerner, they 100% have the pace to take it to Benneker. I don't know if they will. I don't believe... I, I, if I were a betting man, I would say that they probably won't. And to be fair, uh, from what I'm seeing from our lovely audience uh, on, on, on Twitch... They're not feeling likely that anyone is going to take it to uh, to, to Max Benneker, but there is still the potential. It's not as if he's um, you know second the lap fast and everyone else is just going to check out into the distance. You're talking about tiny margins. It's just people need to go aggressive early. Yeah, I've, I, it could come down to one mistake. Could come down to one incident, right? Yuri Toman got a bit aggressive at Singapore, and uh, well, Benneker paid a bit of a price, and Patrick Holtzman picked up the win. So it could go in, in any direction, but Benneker from the front, I think you're right. It's, it's hard to look past him, uh, especially to go back to back in the championship. Let's talk behind then, Lewis. Are we going to see any fighting? Do you think Benneker could get separated out if Tome and Kazabon and Lona start fighting for second and third amongst themselves? If they do fight hard um, yeah, in their own little group for second or third position, then yes, 100%, especially around here, you do lose a lot of time from going side by side, especially if it's around that arena section where you can go around the outside or inside uh, and then you can kind of carry that all, basically all the way up to Mobile One and even into the Saxco. If you do that, you're going to lose a whole heap of time. It's not worth it early doors. Let's see what's going to happen for the first race. So here we go. As the drivers get ready to go, you can see the countdown building in the top right corner of your screen. It's all come down to this. Three races and a champion will be crowned. Lights build, engines rev, and the finals of the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland are go. Instantly single file. No surprise there. Drivers know what is on the line, and Benneker will run a little bit wide and try and run that momentum into turn two to get onto the brakes, roll himself onto the power, and carry a good advantage into the hairpin. Moritz Lohner has a look up the inside of Yuri Toman as Danbeats and Schmiedel side by side behind, but a tidy start is onto the back straightaway. We sweep. Yeah, Schmiedel went a little bit wide going through the uh, the first corner as well, and now he's going uh, completely side by side with Danbeats. That's the battle for position going down at the hairpin a little bit of contact opening up the uh the door potentially for the mode gray of Matea who might try and look to go down the inside as they work their way to the hairpin there's contact between Danbeats and Schmiedel uh, as the pair of them go out wide all getting very messy down there the top four are going to be clearing away in all this and this is where we were talking about the battles maybe allowing breakaways to build loners a half look on Yuri Toman didn't bear too much fruit, but behind can Schmiedel go around the outside. Big lunge as well, coming from Lucas Matea on Nico Nuninghoff. Great racing. We know Hockenheim can deliver this sort of action in these Porsche Cup cars. Schmied a little bit wide. Dan Beats will hold on to the position into the stadium section for the first time of asking. Oh, that's a bit of a look there. Mode Gray Matea, the chalk white of Nuninghoff, just hanging the outside as they work their way into Mobile One. As uh, once again, uh, they, they still go side by side. This is what we're talking about. This is just going to cost them so much time. Look at the gap that's already been built to the group ahead of them. Uh, kind of similar to what's happened ahead of Dan Beats and Schmiedel. They can still catch up to that group ahead, but it's just looking less and less likely. First lap of 11 completed here at the Hockenheim ring. And Benneker's, he's not running away. It's not running away, but these laps are going to fly by. And I do feel as though Benneker's going to have to deal and respond to this pressure that Thibaut Casabon is going to bring to him. No surprise chicanes on the pitch uh, straight this time by for us to be worried about. No, instead, it's just let's get through these corners, get the best exit. And I think in the case of Thibaut Casabon, hope that this draft's going to give you enough of a toe to make a move happen in the closing stages. I think this is going to be... Even though it's a sprint race, Lewis, it's going to be a bit of a bike race. We're going to have to settle in 
initially until Thibaut Casabon thinks it's time to go for the move, probably in only the last three or four laps. Yeah, indeed. Um, I, mean, I was kind of wondering there if Casabon was going to look at something obviously was a little bit too far back, so uh, fair enough. We were kind of wondering um, whether Casabon back in, uh, in Red Atlanta actually had the pace to, to, to really go uh, on the attack. If, if, if Benneker was actually in that race normally, we were kind of wondering if, if Casabon actually had the pace and had the measure of Benneker. We weren't 100% sure. Uh, I mean, if you're uh, comparing it to a bike race, and hopefully we don't have the um, a repeat of what actually happened in the Basque country, the Tour of the Basque country, because uh, there was a very, 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 very large crash um, in that at very high speed. We don't want any of that in this. We want to see nice, clean racing. Uh, speak for yourself. I always love a little bit of chaos and Dude. carnage out on the track. We'll come to the end of lap number two with still, again, four four cars split by 1.6 seconds. I just don't like damaged Porsche race cars. You know, that's the thing. We like Porsches to be factory fresh when they're out there and racing. Uh, with the leading group, though, Hasabon is starting to just get dropped. We're talking small margins here, but at this level of competition with a fixed setup, Tire management, I think, is where sometimes we do also see uh, the give and take, right? We've seen sometimes Tibo Casabon a little bit, quote unquote, slow at the start of races, and then he comes back into the race at the end of it. That the tires aren't resetting every lap like they were in qualifying, and he's definitely not the wide boy Casabon here today. No, exactly. I say the important bit for Casabon right now is to make sure that he remains as close as possible to the back of Benneker without using that much tyre. Now, the problem is when you're behind someone, obviously you have less downforce on the front of the car, uh, which means you do get a little bit of dirty air, which typically speaking, it's not going to matter that much. But it does do one major thing, which obviously causes the front tyres to scrub more, i.e. they don't, you, know, you get a bit more understeer in the car, which then causes them to uh, you know, overheat, which then causes them to slide more which then causes them to overheat more, which then puts you into a really bad position later on in the race. So this is why you kind of got to, to remain as close as possible, but using as little tyres in doing so. It's really, really, it's a, it's a tricky balance. Um, yes, sure, the, the, these are, the, we're talking short races here, just, uh, you know, just 11 laps here um, at the Hockenheim ring. But in that time, it's plenty of time for these tyres to, uh, to, to, to go far past what they're actually capable and, and, and accepting of. Yeah, you're, you're writing my biography there where you talked about the struggles with tires. That is my daily life anytime I jump into a car. Casabon within four tenths or so, though, as you get ready to break the timing beam once again. It's Yuri Toman that's dropped back a little bit more as we come to the line. Not seeing Moritz Lohner really be close enough to make the move, but you can see Christopher Dambeats just at the back of shot as well. Mikel Schmiedel and then Nico Nuninghoff, Lucas Matea as they run through the top eight right now. Not really seeing too many changes. We know that it can be difficult to effectively make the moves happen in this sort of uh, car where you don't necessarily always have the ability to get a good exit. But I think maybe going over to spa Franco shop, we can have a little bit more excitement given some of the lengthier straights that we have as we jump on board with the Mode Grey Mateo machine. Yeah, indeed. Obviously, this one's uh, eighth position at the moment for Mateo. He's having that battle with, uh, with Nuninghoff a little bit earlier on. Nearly was actually, to be fair, uh, not, not that far away from sneaking his way through into fifth place uh, and, and sneaking his way past uh, Dan Beats. Unfortunately, was not able to, to do so on that first lap. I mean, you say about like, you know, how, how we're expecting the tyre wear and how we're expecting these races to unfold. I would say this race will know where people are at tyre-wise once we get to about lap seven or eight. That's normally when you start to see uh, the tyres either you know, overheating and falling off or you know, maybe even uh, finding themselves into their, uh, their, their, their right window. Uh, the, the gaps at the moment between the top four they're, they're kind of evening out about half a second apiece uh, you know there's about half a second it's less than that obviously fair um, between Benneker and Casabon then they get, again uh, it was slightly larger but fairly similar back to uh, gap back to Toman uh, and then again about a five tenth six tenth margin back to uh, Lerner so I would say none of the top four are necessarily out of this race but it's so hard to uh, to kind of keep yourself into it you've got to imagine how frustrating this is for the drivers when you're sat there behind the wheel when you're close enough you can't really go for a move that can be very frustrating we do have live race control by the way that's uh, going to be working across of our three races to intervene in case anything does need to uh, be adjudicated to be penalized i can uh, tell you right now quite pleased to say as well nothing from race control with three laps now officially in the books back over though to lucas matea who, who up the inside of nico nuninghoff and that's maybe just going to compromise their exit onto this back straight away they'll be neck and neck as they get onto the power the 919 gonna just try and squeeze matea onto the outside astroturf and 
Well, that gives him a little bit more distance to run, gives him the momentum as well, switches him to the inside on the run towards the hairpin. Neck and neck into the breaking zone. Last of the late breakers are about to really start to battle, but this is where if you're the car on the outside, you want to try and switch it back underneath. Move gets made and Mateo moves on forward. It's not quite done yet. Maybe you'll get something more into the arena section. That's what Nooning Hoff will be uh, will be hoping for. You know, seeing that uh, that opportunity, you can see how much closer Nooning Hoff's going to be. Going to look to the outside into the arena section. He's going to commit to it, but then of course coming straight across Matea uh, in that breaking zone. It is a slightly diagonal breaking zone going into the arena section, and Matea is going to be able to hang on uh, to that seventh position. So Nooning Hoff not able to get his way back through. Pretty brave on the brakes, and pretty brave to have looked uh, to try and make it stick around the outside in that 919 car, but um, it was still. A little bit, uh, a little bit sketchy. I'm glad you couldn't see my face when he went for that deep send because I thought for a second he was going to get pushed out wide on the run through the arena section. But uh, I guess they were able to figure it out. They're a little bit more talented than at least I am in, in battling through some of those sequences. It does seem as though, by the way, something's happened to uh, Lucas Egger in the Visceral Esports entry. He's dropped down to the very back of the field. But as we break what should be technically getting towards the half race distance of this race, margin opens up at the front. Now four cars split by two. Two seconds as Moritz Lona drops back from his teammate, Max Benneker. That margin now almost up to one full second. Back through the long left-hander they go. And Benneker looking comfortable. I like the fact, though, Lewis, that, you know, certain championships, you know, we may take the results from this first race and carry it forward to race number two. No, we make them qualify again. We put them under pressure to determine where they start race two. Yeah, which, uh, you know, I do like. I, I will say, uh, I know that a, a lot of these drivers, they, they do hate because they're super pole qualifying, uh, where you only get one lap. Um, I still maintain, and I don't like this, I'd love to see them do just single, because that's where the drama comes from. You know, just a single lap qualifying. Because you might like Benneker, uh, considering his... Uh, Struggles. His, his, his percentages of, of actual laps counted in qualifying sessions in this is terrible. Right. That is the, I right. think that is the only stat that will really go against Benneker is his percentage of actual counted lap times during a qualifying session. Now, obviously, that's because he knows that he's got a 15 minute session. So he's attacking the circuit a lot harder than you would do um, if you were doing it in a Super Bowl single lap uh, qualifying. But I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd quite like to see. Uh, I think it would make things a little bit more spicy because either way at the moment, uh, Benneker is starting to run away. That gap's nearly a second, Arjuna. I think... Uh, I think this might be the telling sign for the evening if Benneker is able to uh, to check out here. I agree. I think it's going to take a mistake at this point to stop the 71 from marching on forward. But never say never. We'll find out if there can be a mistake. The, the, the Even the best sometimes do stumble. Although Max Benneker has had a smile on his face for the most part and a happy driver is usually a driver that performs quite well. So that's definitely, I think, going to be quite uh, fun to watch. You know, as much as, by the way, there's plenty going on in the world of Porsche esports, as ever, Porsche continued to be involved across of everything. Uh, Lewis, I was playing some Cyberpunk last night, Cyberpunk 2077. Nice. Uh, did, did you know there's not one, but two Porsches that you can go and buy in the future? I, I, I thought there was only the one in there. Oh, there you go. The more you no, know. they added a new one, apparently. So I went okay. and I bought this new Porsche. I had to go and retrieve it. Uh, in, in interesting circumstances, but uh, always great to go and play a game and just find a random Porsche in the mix. I have not played Cyberpunk in a long time. You're now making me convinced to pick it back up again. Um, so yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, interesting. Well, Porsches do appear everywhere in the world of, uh, of esports and gaming, so it makes sense because everyone loves a Porsche. Um, although I will say at the moment, someone loving a Porsche slightly more than everyone else will probably be Benneke. <laughs> We're really approaching those final moments of the race. Four laps uh, left to go after this one. Um, you could check the maths on that one, but but that is the case. I know what you're like. I when trust it comes you. To how many laps? Yeah, it's all eight, nine, ten, eleven. I, I, I don't know why we count laps much more on this broadcast. Like I, I, we've had so many mistakes with it throughout the season. But you know what it is? Because right. we get l lulled into a false sense of security, right? Because a lot of the races have been like this, a little bit. You know, I don't want to say sleepy, but they they've been on slow burn. You know, they've been boiling up and bubbling, and you're just waiting for it to to, to boil over and. Sometimes we lose track of how many laps and we start talking about colors and cyberpunk and uh, mahogany metallic being a great way to describe brown. It's been a fun season on commentary. I think some of the drivers would say they haven't had so much wheel to wheel action though because they've have been having to push so much and Boris Lona being cheered on by 
Is that a bear looking at him? Next? I, I can't quite figure that out. I, I, I can't even see the bear because I'm so busy looking at his buff muscles that we're getting a nice close-up view there of, uh, of, of, of built learner. Let's see if he goes for a move, though. Is he built for overtaking straight on the inside of the hairpin? Moritz Learner is going for it on Yuri Tyron. A little bit of contact there on the apex. Plenty of race, uh, racing room given on the exit. And I think Lerner, oh, he's not through yet. And... They're going to lean on each other through the right-hand kink. The Riviera Blue Machine going to be left on the outside now as the mint green entry of Yuri Toman tries to defend. I mean, great stuff. It's drawing them off the back, though, of Thibaut Kazabon. They've already lost a good half a second just through a couple of corners. Deal neck and neck as they enter into the stadium section. And this is where on the outside, be careful to be pushed onto the gravel, but you can hold the inside in through the next part of the sequence where it's a bit more grippy. Loner still brave though the long way around. Yeah, a little bit out wide there going through the tax curve as uh, is, is Yuri Toman. And there we go. There's the up and under as they work their way through the penultimate, uh, well, the final chicane, the penultimate couple of corners they work their way into. Now Morris Loner has to settle his way for fourth position. The reason why they're fighting so hard for these spots, you might go, oh, well, their chances of winning are gone. They, they probably already know that. Um, and the thing is, is, overtaking around here can be so tricky. As soon as you get the single opportunity to pass, you've got to go for it. And that is exactly what Moritz Lerner did. Didn't quite work out on that occasion. Trust me, he is going to get another attempt. He's going to send into the hairpin as well. Not this corner coming up, but it's out of this where he's setting everything up. Prize money only paid out to the top three. It's 12,000 euros to our champion, 8,000 for second, and 5,000 for third. So the difference between second and third, 3,000 euros. The difference between third and fourth, 5,000 euros. And no money going in your direction. And that's why these fights are going to be building. Thibaut Kazabon came into this uh, grand final with 12 points. Moritz Lohner with 15. Yuri Toman with 10. So that's all the benchmarks where they started from. Two laps to go at the line. Lona not close enough to have a look this time by. Yeah, exactly. Let's see where uh, where those opportunities are going to come from. Uh, the hairpin is obviously the best one. The thing is, if you if you send it into the hairpin, you've actually kind of you've kind of got to send it in a little bit too deep, right? Um, because the thing is, the outside run is always going to work. Um, if you don't send it in a little bit too deep and then maybe going to go for the uh, for the up and under coming off that corner, you've actually got to basically stop on the apex, um, which might get you a 20-second time point in Formula 1. But right now, it's actually fine and fair racing. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I'm, it, I, you'd watch, by the way, the the angle of the car as they get onto the power, the amount of energy that they're trying to put down through the tires at this point in the race, they're coming to the end of lap number nine, you are starting to feel the effects a little bit of tire life and you're slip and sliding a bit more than you would have been at the very start once your tires got into their operating window. Margin up front, by the way, it's now two seconds. Bye-bye, Max Benneker. Looking very, very comfortable here today is Yuri Toman takes liberties with the track limits. I'm glad Paul Smith's not in this commentary booth just yet because he wouldn't be too thrilled with that. Which is hilarious for a touring car driver. We're not going to talk about that. That's fine. Um, as they uh, head their way back out towards the, the power point. You can deal with that later on tonight. That's fine. Uh, where is the season finale of Pesk? Oh, we're going over to Monza. Oh, God. <laughs> it makes sense. It's where Who needs track limits his, there, yeah, by the way? Yeah, well, I mean, it's where Sebastian Joe won his first championship, so it makes, it makes sense him going there to win the second one, right? Uh, out a little bit too deep there. Morris Lerner in the uh, in the bottom right of your screen. Just maybe struggling to get the car completely stopped. Um, he says, you're absolutely right, Arjuna. Uh, I will just say, Lewis, your comment about touring car drivers actually made me almost laugh out loud and fall out of my chair in laughter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, congratulations, you managed to get me uh, ma managed to get me to break. One lap to go at the line. Moritz Lohn is still not close enough to make a look. And at some point, you know it will be a lunge and a lunge coming out of nowhere. Show yourself in the mirrors. Moritz Lohn likes a big old send, but. I think if he do if he's going to make the move late into the hairpin once again, what we've learned. Yuri Toman willing to stick that defense and to hold on to the spot. It's just, I mean, again, it was such a, a, a brave, uh, you know, fight from from Toman to have actually been able to fend off uh, Morris Stone and the pair of them were giving it a good uh, a, a good go, uh, that's for sure. But there's, there's just not that opportunity. Thibaut Casabon's tires not looking quite as good as they have done onto the final lap, the 11th of 11 here uh, in the first race of the evening. I'm not going to lie, if I am anyone on this grid, I am very, very, very concerned about the pace of Benneker and the consistency of Benneker. Shout out, by the way, to, uh, to Chris Madambis. He's actually really keeping in tow with this, uh, with this battle for the podium.
He's, you know, been on and off in terms of pace this season. We've definitely seen the potential, just haven't seen the consistency from him. For example, the way that we've seen it from Benneke, just to be there at the front and, you know, outside of the struggles, you know, the bit of contact he had at Singapore that let Patrick Holtzman grab the win. Drama at Road Atlanta through no fault of his own. I mean, he's been impervious this season so far. And you look at the margin, two and a half seconds in an 11-lap race in a field this strong, Lewis, this is, you don't often see performances like this, and it's why it's so rare. It's why we're talking about it so much. The dominance that he's really had this season is there comes the move from Lona, finally. Yeah, he's looking down the inside of the arena, out wide. I think there might have been a bit of contact, and I think uh, Yuri Tome is going to be able to hang on in that mint green. The up and under as they work their way towards mobile one's not going to work out for Lerner. Uh, they leave the arena section, certainly with the advantages. Two RHG drivers on the podium, not going to make it uh, an extra one for Mouth, but you're absolutely right. The unbelievable dominant performance we've seen from Benica. The thing is, he can't get complacent, Curtis, either. No, uh, but Benneke, with the smile that he's had, don't think he's being complacent. He's enjoying every moment of racing as he winds out of the final corner. Strike one to Benneke here in the final of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. 20 points to his name, a sigh of relief, and acts one in the books. Still two races to go, but Benneke's taken one step closer to back-to-back -back championships. Yeah, dude, I would say it's going to make a lot of people happy. Most, uh, you know, highest of all will be Benneke himself. There you go. You can see how happy he is. Oh. Oh, wait. Look at the hair, though, Lewis. It's looking spectacular. Why are you, you're, you're obsessed with his hair? Because you know you know the only other person thing. that has hair as fact, spectacular as that, Lasse Back, who we've, of course, seen in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. There is just something about that hair. It is fantastic, and it's clearly powering him quite well. Lucas Egger has mentioned some technical issues, clearly, for him at some point. Drop him to the back. But Benneke, Kasbon, Toman, one, two, and three and effectively again how they all qualified at the front so not really too much change for us to talk about and we'll keep an eye on that in the two races left to go Moritz Lona settles for fourth in front of Christopher Dan Beatswell Mikel Schmiedel Lucas Matea Nico Nuninghoff Joachim Thunder Flavio Tusit and then of course Lucas Egger round out the 11 that took the green well from the Hockenheim ring we'll make our way over to the Arden, and that's the beauty of sim racing not only can we make that journey very very quickly but Lewis, now one, these drivers all have one race done and dusted. They now have to go and get ready to go racing at a totally different circuit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it is quite different. Hockenheim Ring to uh, to Spa, two very, very different circuits. Of course, Red Atlanta after that one. Yes, they will have practiced it. They will have already done uh, most of it. And to be perfectly honest, I, I can see them in the... In, in the basic practice session that they'll have like to get ready for, for qualifying they'll probably get straight back up to speed in fact if we didn't even have a practice session um, and it was straight into into qualifying where they've got multiple laps I would actually be surprised if the lap times were that much different just because these drivers they are the best of the best they can basically jump in once they've done enough practice that information is locked into their mind uh, they can just jump straight in uh, and carry on to the point where I would almost say even if Benneke hadn't done any practice for this season finale he'd still be that strong I'm trying to disagree with you. I'm struggling. I know you want I don't, to. I know you want to disagree. I really would love to, but I don't think I can. Uh, don't forget, we are watching on in Porsche's Twitch chat. So do chat to Lewis and myself. Let us know who you're cheering for, who you think is going to win these next two races. But don't go anywhere. As mentioned, two races left to go. We're going to step aside, though, to the Porsche Stuttgart brand store and check in with the Porsche Koana Esports team and our moderator, Lisa. dominate so much and make him so strong well in this race at least in particular um he clearly managed the ties better than anyone else um uh, thibaut for sure at the beginning was there and, and very very close and even closing in i think around lap three or four 
probably because he was using the tyre more earlier. Mm. Um, Max was more thinking of the long run, uh, keeping the tyre in in uh, in play, and uh, yeah, that's part of the reason why there was a two and a half second gap at the end. Uh, you know, the, the pacing qualifying was very similar. Um, had Thibaut managed the tyre maybe a little bit better, um, he probably would have been able to compete at the end there. But uh, very different track now. Spa uh, Hockenheim is very unique in the way that it's uh, many many slow corners mm -hmm. and long straights. Spa is much uh, more full of the you know medium to the high speed corners. So uh, yeah, arguably managing tyre there is even more important. And I mean, looking at the podium now, it just shows one more time how important qualifying is, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we saw in the race, right, there wasn't a lot of overtaking. Um, I guess a little bit difficult to stay close in the high speed corners to then get the draft down the back straight into the hairpin. Uh, saw it a couple times towards the end there as the the, uh, the 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 tire management kind of overlapped, depending on who was pushing a little bit harder when. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Qualifying is also important. Uh, obviously, they have a longer session here, 12 minutes. Do as many laps as you can in that time, which ultimately makes the field closer uh, because you get more opportunity. But uh, yeah, qualifying is super, super important. I was speaking with your uh, teammate, Mitchell de Young, throughout the race, and he was like, this is such an unusually calm race, really. Uh, he was expecting more carnage, to quote him right there. Um, how do you see that? I agree. Uh, I think even looking at the um, previous five rounds, uh, there was often a few incidents here or there, uh, which happens in racing, right? You're um, pushing hard, you're trying to get the most out of yourself, there's other cars on track, uh, contact and, and incidents can happen. But yeah, the racing was actually really clean here tonight, uh, so far for the first round, first race. Uh, and when there was contact, it was slight bumping, you know, uh, rubbing is racing, as they say, and that uh, generates good racing. So, Hockenheim in the back now. You already mentioned Spa's up next. What are you expecting and what can the fans and everyone in the audience in the Twitch stream expect? Honestly, I expect to see a closer race, uh, given the style of the circuit, um, much more drafting opportunity, which should keep the field much closer. Unsure how the time management's going to go. Uh, obviously, a lot of that will depend on qualifying too. But uh, yeah, honestly, I think we'll see a much closer race, much more side-to-side -side racing, especially in the opening laps. Uh, the run down towards Lecom on lap one is uh, often <laughs> a, uh, a chaotic one, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see three wide. Um, but yeah, from then on, who knows? But it will sure be uh, a very, um, let's say, energetic start to the race. Mm -hmm. Maybe one last uh, one on Spa, because uh, you mentioned earlier here in the brand store how this is a track that everyone just loves so much. What it is, what it, or what is it that makes it so special to you personally? Obviously, one, it's an iconic circuit in the real world, one that has been around for such a long time and is always highly regarded by many drivers in the sim or in, um, in real racing as one of the best circuits in the world. It's undulating, it's technical, um, it's great, promotes great racing. Um, uh, obviously, too, in, uh, in some sense, it's <laughs> typically quite uh, unpredictable in terms of uh -huh. weather, which can throw big races. Obviously, we're not going to see that here today in Rensport, but that's one reason or uh, another reason why so many people love the race, love the circuit, sorry. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, it's one of those tracks that's fun to drive and you can drive it all day and it doesn't really feel like it gets old uh, mm -hmm. because, uh, yeah, it's just so technical and um, really tests you as a driver. So we're excited and looking forward to the next race, to race number two today on final day. In
It's time to go. A new season brings new faces, new drivers, and new storylines. Welcome to the future, to Rennsport, and to the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. It's a great start from Benneke as he leads them into turn one, and three wide behind into the opening corner. The speed yellow machine doesn't cover that inside line, and that's Kazamon. Contact with Benneke, and now to the lead goes Patrick Holtzman. It's side by side once again for fourth position, and this time a little bit more contact. Can the red line car box out Loner? That will be the move on the exit of the arena section. That is absolutely beautiful from the flying French. Oh, it's contact. Oh, teammate on teammate drama. Why slightly further behind? I mean, goodness gracious me, the long way around. Is he going to allow Nuningov and Benito to squeak their way on through? With a defensive line being taken by Wojciech. Big moment there for Kazimon, straight around and into his teammate. He sends Yuri Toman round. As a round goes one and it's Benneke. Morris Lona two wheels into the grass and to the inside. Benneke goes foot two for two at the Hockenheim ring. Patrick Holtzman, finally a race winner on Rennsport. Thibaut Kasbon winning in the penultimate round of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. And now we've got our grand final locked and loaded. On the 6th of April, a champion will be crowned. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back here to Porsche's Twitches. We get ready to go for race number two. You're going to have to sit with, unfortunately, Lewis and myself and our faces and maybe voices for a little bit as we get ready to go and practice and qualifying. But, well, I'm sure we can talk about cyberpunk and all sorts of fun things like that. Lewis, an interesting first race, but I think Josh Rogers said it best. A quiet, understated, quiet, maybe not spectacular race number one. Quiet is probably the better way of putting it. Like, not too much really happened in it. It was more about, you know, Benneke running away uh, and really asserting his domination on this championship. Obviously, Spa's going to be something slightly different. We uh, we certainly hope. Uh, you know, if ideally, if Benneke could get a really bad qualifying here, that would be great. Um, but then again, we have seen the idea of uh, you know, working your way up through the orders. Uh, it's pretty hard work in this championship. We saw it back in Road Atlanta when, uh, obviously, uh, Benneke had an issue in the first race. We're still able to make the second race, um, but then got involved in the work working uh, working his way up the order um, you know, he can certainly win from the front but, but you know when, when you've had those kind of problems it makes sense it can be a bit more difficult so for him he's definitely expecting a nice clean run uh, all the way to uh, to road atlanta where he can cash the check take the prize and, uh, and run away with things as the champion once again yeah and uh, i think you will want to really minimize the amount of work that he has to do when we get to road atlanta i think again just going back to what he said in some of the chats, the interviews that we've had with him, where he said in particular, that's one of the tracks he's maybe not hoping to see in this finale. And I think it's really interesting, Lewis, right? That, you know, these three tracks for the finale were all voted on by our Porsche community. You decided that we should race at the Hockenheim Ring at Spa Road Atlanta, that we shouldn't, for example, go and race at, you know, maybe Daytona or uh, Orchard Road Streets of Singapore. I find it interesting, the, the tracks that we've ended up landing at. Yeah, I can understand Spa and I can actually understand Road Atlantic because two great tracks. I don't understand Hockenheim Ring. It, that, that is one hill that I will die on. Uh, I think Hockenheim Ring is a completely overrated race circuit, but sorry. Uh, if you are a Hockenheim Ring fan, um, it ain't it for me, Chief. Uh, obviously, when you've got circuits like Daytona, I was expecting something like a Daytona or a Monza. I was expecting Monza to have, to have beaten out uh, you know, the likes of, uh, of, of the Hockenheim Ring on the vote. Mostly because Hockenheim Ring, oh, sorry, Monza does generally provide some pretty decent racing. Um, uh, but that is mostly straights uh, and into chicane. So it is also a slightly overrated circuit in itself, but that's fine. It's fine. And basically, I am a hard man to please when it comes to racetracks, as uh, as you well know. I, uh, well, I got told once that, um, do you like any circuit? And I'm like, yeah, I like Bathurst. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Good, good, good question, actually, because I'm at the point now where you know this. We commentate on tracks enough that... The track we're going to next, uh, Spa Francochamp. I don't even know how many races I've commentated there. Uh, let's not talk about 2021, where during that summer it was basically just GT3 cars at Spa. And I yep. think we got a little bit overloaded and we never want to have to commentate on that combo ever again. Instead, let's talk about standings. Where we sit after that first race, of course, uh, is in the books. Max Benneker sits on top with the 40 points. Remember, 20 from the victory in the first race. 20 because he came into this uh, grand final, the leader from the regular season. 
at a 20 point buffer as a result handed to him. 13 points is advantage to Thibaut Kazabon, who jumps in front of Moritz Lohner in the fight for second and third, those other championship uh, positions that pay out prize money. Yeah, indeed, it's just more of a, uh, a dominant position. I can't remember, what was it that you said that uh, you, you were talking to me before the, uh, before the race? What does, uh, what does Max Benecker have to do in this one uh, with the positions of the other ones uh, to, to, to win it after just two races of the evening? No, he can't. Stats down? Uh, no, I don't have it written down. It, it's mathematically still possible, I think, for Thibaut Kazwan if Benecker wins and he finishes second. But uh, don't trust the commentator's math. I, I, look, basically, let's, let's, just, let's just put it this way. If Benneker wins this race um, and the rest of them have terrible races, then it's over. I think so, Lerner and Toman would have, because there's a five point gap between first and second, Lerner and yes. Toman, they would be out of it regardless if Benneker won. I've just done the math. If oh. Thibaut Kazabon comes second, and Max Benneker wins. So let's say, you know, best case scenario for Thibaut Kazbon if Benneker wins as he finishes seconds, he's 18 yeah. points behind Max Benneker. So basically at that point, Max Benneker just needs to finish in order to win the championship. Yes. Basically what we're saying is, is from, from now on, unless Benneker has an issue in this race specifically, um, it's, it's basically done. Um, then again, you never know. You never know. And also, whilst we're all talking about the prize for the, for the win, blah, 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 it's very easy to, to, to basically kind of ignore everything else. Um, it can seem, you know, some, sometimes you need to treat it a little bit more like Formula 1, where we don't care about who wins. We care about what the, what's happening in the battle for second, because it's far more interesting. Do we really care about that in Formula 1? In this season, less so. Um, last season was the only thing getting me through. Uh, I was going to say uh, that based on the newspapers, uh, because I don't watch Formula One anymore. I just read the, the newspaper afterwards. All right, mister. I've, 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 I've outgrown it. Oh, no. Uh, you just know that for some reason we end up having broadcast schedule at the very same time. Yeah, that's why you got two screens, mate. Uh, if Formula One was on at this moment, I would make sure that on this big screen ahead of me, I would absolutely have the Formula One on that. This is how you know Lewis McLean only ever has to commentate on his races and doesn't have to produce them as well. That's so true. Uh, I, I mean, my, my mind is breaking just trying I, to picture another screen being added right now. I'm just saying. I will say, though, uh, I can almost guarantee if Formula One was on right now, Hugo Luis upstairs and Dane Baird, to be fair, the pair would have it on in the race spot almost office. Almost certainly it'll be on here in, uh, in, in race spot HQ in Cologne. Or as I'm like just saying. Cologne. Uh, as a as as someone who's having to only just commentate on this race, uh, would probably be up on one of my many monitors next to me as well. But it's uh, nice. that's fine. It's not, which means that uh, on the east coast of the US, they have to wake up at like one o'clock in the morning to watch this race. <laughs> Whereas for me on the west coast, I'll stay up till ten, I'll go to sleep at midnight, and I'll watch an F1 race this year, Lewis. Yeah, I mean, I still, I, 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 I'm going to put it on in the same way that I did with qualifying this morning, which was uh, on my laptop whilst I have another nap. Um, that's fine. Uh, that's, how, that's how you watch Formula One these days. Uh, it's not how you watch IMSA. I will just say that, though. Uh, you you, what, or, mm, the way you watch IMSA is you, you sit there very, very excitedly when they're in green flag. And then when they go under yellow, you can go and cook a, a steak dinner or something. I don't know. Because it Got takes time ages, for. is it? It does take quite a while, nice. you know. That's why we don't do safety cars in sim racing too often. So, well, I mean, to be fair, I, I was, had the, the, the joyous pleasure last week of being at Alton Park for the season opener of British GT, uh, obviously because of the championship that I commentate on, which is GB3 and GB4. Uh, safety cars? That, oh, man. Uh, no, see, kind of, but not really. They, they, we had a full a virtual safety car, basically, which I think is new for this season. Uh, and in the second race, we run under a virtual safety car for half an hour. It's, just, it's a one-hour race. Uh, um, they were wow. not pleased on the brook. <laughs> I thought it was you know, hilarious. You know what that reminds me of is our MC Sports Global Championship back in 2022, where we had a well, legitimately 20, 25 minute safety car period. Yeah. Well, we yeah. didn't have a Porsche safety car, though. That could have made our safety car period a little bit quicker. I mean, uh, drivers and stuff being competent generally makes that bit a little bit quicker anyway. So uh, that's also true. I, I, think, I think that's more. That's probably more the focus. Uh, obviously, watch them uh, battling their way around. There is Max Benneker. Uh, we're about to head into the qualifying. Uh, chances of him getting pole and victory again? Uh, how close to 100% can you get without being 100? Well, 99.9 .9 recurring. Yeah, so I think probably that. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's a solid... I, I don't know. I was going to say that too. I don't know what the betting, how, how to do that. 
11, you are, of course, the man that has not missed a Rensport broadcast since The Sim debuted in 2023. Sort of. Max, Ma oh, actually, good point, yeah. Max Benneker has had a pretty decent record here at Spa, I feel. Yeah, obviously, uh, the uh, the very first um, competition uh, on ESL uh, R1, which was uh, in Katowice, uh, obviously that was uh, here at Spa. Uh, he did take victory in the final, actually managed to beat out um, Yuri Toman in all of that one. So, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see whether he's able to do so once more, or maybe Thibaut Kasbon might throw his hat into the ring. He obviously wasn't there um, in that race. The only, I think the only, the only, the only broadcast stuff that I've missed in, uh, in Rensport have been the Rensport community broadcast that Lino and stuff do, which I know it's been there uh, it's, it's gone down quite well in the community so at least that it's been fun as well seeing as well you know community races as Rangeport continues to get more and uh, more of an active player base and been fun seeing the discord uh, conversation as well uh that's been going on it, lewis qualifying is going to get underway once again we'll, we'll see that slow build i think right especially at spa when you know the laps are relatively long usually you'd think you'd only get a lap or two in the session but 15 minutes you're going to get a decent number of opportunities to set a lap time here and a lap time where you know i think back to esl r1 often we'd come here and track limits slowdowns would end up being an issue which you know in these cars with the lack of you know downforce that they have relative to a gt3 may see that a little bit more in this qualifying session yeah, I mean, look, track limits, particularly at the top at Radion, uh, are a problem. Uh, there are a couple of other places around there, Blanchemont, um, etc. There are a couple of others where it uh, kind of crops up a little bit, but for the most part, uh, generally around the lap, it's those two. Uh, the important bit, though, once qualifying's done and we go into the race, I think this is actually a pretty solid one for overtaking. The run up towards Le Com, you've got this, it's two kilometers uh, from La Source all the way up to Le Com. Uh, plenty of room to go on the attack, and that's basically where they are at the moment, uh, looking for their, uh, well, to start their qualifying session. I'm going to go and find out what the poll was back in uh, back in Spa earlier in the season. So while Lewis goes and digs into his history books, we'll look at some of these drivers that just get themselves built up now, ready to go for the qualifying session. And again, I do I do kind of agree with Lewis in some ways that you know Super Bowl qualifying is uh, quite exciting when you get just that one lap. It's what we see, of course, and what we'll see later today in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. But these sessions where it builds and you just get to see the drivers just get more quicker and quicker with each lap and just find those little intensity uh, rises they can find the best really rise in these sessions in a, in a different way than they have to rise in those pressure filled situations with just one lap to to put onto the board Lewis, has that been enough time for you to fill to go oh, yeah, off no, and find I, 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 I had it like literally 10 seconds after starting. There you go. It's, uh, it's fine. I'm a professional. Uh, two minutes, 17.224. It was uh, Max Benneker was on pole position earlier on in the season. He was about a tenth of a bit clear of Patrick Holtzman, who's not here. Uh, he was a little bit clear of uh, Enzo Benito, who's not here. Uh, he was a little bit clear of uh, Morris Lerner, who is here. Three tenths of a second, Morris Lerner was off of the uh, the pole times. So we're aiming for that 2.17.2. Uh, it's roughly about three seconds a lap slower uh, than they were running in ESL R1 in the in the gt3s but, which is about you know what you'd expect right with yeah. the, the 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 difference between those cars so it goes to show that that they're making the most of the the situations at all times and like to see as well that comparison giving us a good indication so they'll come to the line to build their first uh times right now you can see just how wide Thibaut casabon ran out of the final corner just trying to get a better line uh, on his run towards turn one. Remember, every time they cross the start finish line, their tires get reset. There's no tire shenanigans being played here in qualifying, no. Every lap, you get a fresh set of boots to make the most of, and you've got the updated version of Spa as well, which does mean gravel on some of the outsides to worry about. Yeah, indeed, and that fantastic grandstand, which I can confirm when it does rain, uh, if you're in the first about four or five rows. Do you get wet? We're back. Oh, yeah. Oh, very wet. Very, very wet. I was here for uh, for the 24 uh, last year. Uh, excellent experience. Oh, lovely to see. And uh, like I say, it's lovely to have uh, a new build of Spa in sim races. It's basically, well, I'd say it's the only place, obviously, now Lamar Olmert's out there is that as well. Um, but, uh, you know, it, this is the first time that we have this laser scan uh, in, the, in the world of sim racing, so it's great to see. Uh, and it's great to in racing around like i said the gravel is a little closer on this than um than on uh, slightly older builds it actually kind of creeps in a little bit on the exit of malmody and to be fair uh, in the sort of campus stavolo section the gravel's a little bit tighter to the race circuit 
It was all changes to bring two wheels uh, to, to Spa a little bit more. You can see off to the left here as well, there's a slightly different uh, configuration of the corner intended for the bikes, but it, it's definitely changed the way that I think the four wheel cars have to th approach and attack this track. And uh, you always enjoy with, you know, you come to tracks that these drivers have basically for years done so many laps around they could drive it basically with their eyes closed having to now see some new nuances to really understand and make the most of through the piff path just watch the hands flick first right then back over to the left and this is really one of the most important corners get slowed down in time turn it in at the right opportunity and then get onto the power because all of this momentum carried up the hill through Blanchemont and into the final braking zone at the chicane yeah you can see how much that wall's pushed back at, uh, at Stavlo on the left hand side it's really open there uh, obviously because you don't want a bike going into that at high speed but it's, it's gravel and, uh, and tarmac out there this is towards Blanchemont see what it's like through here oh, just wrestling it through nicely almost I'd say it was a little bit too wide an entry because I actually kind of had to struggle to get it over the crest um, turning it over to the left hand side let's see what the first lap time is going to be there I was doing again aiming for a 17-2 and again 10 odd minutes left to go in the session plenty of time for improvements to be thrown onto the board and expect the first lap times to maybe not be very representative of what they're going to be at the end in terms of not just the times but the ordering as well as out of turn one see how close to the wall that they dive as they file out of last source all this momentum then in a GT3 car where you're almost foot to the floor through Eau Rouge and Radion, you'd carry through. But in these cars, you can see bounces off the limiter for a second, then back down to fifth as he rises over the top of the crest. And you continue climbing here on your run up to the braking zone at the top of the Camel Straight. Benneker to the top for the 217.253. It's a quarter of a second clear of Thibaut Casabon. Yeah, we were expecting a 17.2. We got a 17.2. Max Benneker, first lap time onto the board. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, if he didn't do another lap time in this session i would actually not be shocked to see if that was the pole time that is a very impressive bank lap to have thrown down uh, like you say casbon there in second position about a quarter of a second down uh, when we went racing here last time he was actually about three uh, he was about a tenth slower uh, than that lap time he's done so casbon has certainly found a bit more time lovely blue skies as well here at uh at Spa. it's a lovely day here in cologne as well so it makes sense nine minutes left in the session means it will depend on when they come back towards the line. They're, of course, not going to reset at any point here in the session with the way the tire uh, resets work. Really love that element added to, to prevent any focus on tire warm-up games and instead just focus on the driving. But uh, it also does give us that time to just try and figure out how many lap times that they have. Uh, again, just to reiterate as well, drivers aren't going to see anyone else on track around them. So it's effectively a closed qualifying session. So even though we look up the road from Moritz Lohner and we see someone, Moritz Lohner has a clear view up towards Blanchemont. Yeah, which to be fair around here, I, you know, I, I get these kind of those circuits where you will you will gain a little bit in the slipstream going up towards Le Con, fair enough, but you'll lose so much in that middle sector by trying to play the games um, and, and, and find your way in traffic. We were actually kind of talking about that this you know, yesterday in various broadcasts and stuff, um, is that if you try and orchestrate something special uh, in this qualifying session, i.e. try and pull the Ferrari Strat at Monza, uh, it doesn't work. You can't do... Well, it, it'll work, one, out of 10 times and when it works it'll be absolutely brilliant but trying to orchestrate that you're better off you finding the race circuit yourself and uh, and going on the attack Morris Lerner moves his way up into second position Yuri Toman now into uh, into third so both of those setting PB lap times um, around here uh, compar comparatively to what they did earlier on the season I will get my words out eventually don't worry about it it's okay uh, sometimes you get your words out eventually and really that didn't say anything at all. The gap will stay the same, it will increase, it will decrease. I mean, Thank Lewis, you. you've got plenty of lines like that, haven't you? It's, it is true. It is true. Um, I do indeed say certain things that are factual, but also pointless. Like the, well, it's a kind of those to say, it's that was the Will Buxton line, the person who uh, wins the race, the first one to cross <laughs> the line or whatever it is, which is a stupid line, and I absolutely love it. It's a great line, actually. Uh, and I could actually totally understand plenty of context in which I would end up saying that line. Um, actually, yeah, because, it's not true. Because it's, it's not, not always true. Exactly, but that's the thing. it's not always true. Uh, and so, again, that's why in various contexts, it's a line that makes perfect sense to, to say out loud. Uh, so now with Loner up to second, by the way, it's back to Mouse 1 and 2. But I think... Uh, Draft is not so large in these cars that we're going to see third and fourth get a massive slingshot, for example, on the opening lap on the run over the top of Radion. However, 
I do think in some ways it's again a benefit, much like it was for, for Kazmon and Toman to be second and third and in, in qualifying at the Hockenheim ring. It's a benefit for Benica and Loner here to be one and two coming out of the opening corner. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but I will say, you know, if I'm as much as you can make some moves around here, a uh, uh, bare minimum, I'd want to be on the front row because the likes of Mouth being on, locked out on that front row. I mean, if you are 8G, you're kind of sat there thinking, we've got to be. Uh, you know, a bare minimum second and third. It's so tight between a pair of them. Smeedle's not that far behind, to be perfectly honest. Could throw his hat into uh, into the ring uh, and be fair. I think Smeedle's at the point where he's definitely just looking for the odd victory. Obviously, Toman's bailed out of this lap ba based on that line uh, going through the final chicane. Are there any improvements from anyone else, though, uh, behind or ahead? Yeah, I don't know. Dan Beats has moved up into fifth spot. At least there's that. Yeah, yeah Tower took a second just to uh, order the, the times correctly, but... Once again, you can see that we are finding a bit of uh, a group at the front and then two sit Thunder and Egger finding themselves at the back. And I'm not actually sure if Egger's technical issues have been resolved. So we may be down to 10 for these final two races. He has yet to put himself onto the board. On board with Kazabon in the Viper Green Machine. He's just jumped to second, less than a tenth off of Benica and a great run over the top of Radion. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I'll say with uh, with Kazbon getting that improvement on the lap time to move the attempt again. I mean, it's, 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 it's definitely it's, it's a large improvement on what he did earlier on in the season. We'll see if um, uh, Benek is able to improve on his time. Obviously, again, uh, it was what was it? It was a two two. It was a, a two two four that he set earlier on in the season. Um, so uh, you know, obviously, he'll want to improve slightly. He'll, he'll want to get a PB on the board. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't necessarily put it past Benek to maybe even break into the seventeen ones. A sixteen nines probably impossible no uh, i'm just saying right now if benica does a 16-9 oh i'm leaving i'm, I'm just uh, i'm gonna power yeah. catch a fly going no commentary for the rest of the day it'll just yeah, be out of silence com com um, competition's over at that point yes uh that uh, that is just such a ridiculous lap time as well uh 16-9 you and i lewis we've, we've driven our, our share of wrench sport uh mm -hmm. and we all often say that we, we leave the driving to more capable people i can't even conceive of how you drive quick enough to do a 17-2 let alone a 16-9 I'm, I'm trying. To, I, see, I, I, i'm trying to think of like what lap time would i be satisfied with if i was on this grid right now um, but, and that is, that is based on my own ability, right? No, because obviously, yeah, no, I'd be really satisfied as a set of seventeen two. I'd be very satisfied. Um, realistically, I, th I think I think I'd be I'd be I'd be happy to be within a second of Benica. You'd be happy to be within a second at a track yeah. like this yeah. because it's so long. I would double that. I'd say two seconds. Nah, nah, no. Nah, I think I think yeah, fix it up and stuff, and uh, knowing how great I am behind the wheel. I think I think I think a second. I think a second's feasible. All right. Are you saying that you're you slower than Krim? Yes. Um, you think in, you're slower than Krim? Really? Especially by the the end of ESLR one. Yeah, I think Krim got to a decent level. He did. He did find himself to a decent level. I still reckon. Krim at the start of the year, maybe a different story. But Krim at the end of the year, no, just, he's definitely. Just to clarify, we're talking me. about uh, Ian Porter, Krim Six, who uh, took part in ESLR one. If you don't know who he is, he's won uh, Call of Duty. I don't, I don't know how many times. Yeah, no, 30. Uh, whatever, I think his, 30? His, race, his race number was 38. Uh, and that's because of how many wins he had on COD. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, I don't understand how Call of Duty esports works too many, no, but many championships. Don't. And now not only a champion in Call of Duty, but a race winner. Yes. In the Porsche Sprint Challenge North America. Both... Uh, uh, the race is on, on debut. He, he won. Uh, one under safety car, one under green flag. So congratulations, Ian. I know you're probably not watching, but uh, where, wherever you are around the world, uh, from, from sim to real. Yeah, I mean, like, fair enough. He's uh, again in, in, incredible uh, story. Is uh, is Krim obviously moving out of the world of uh, of COD, coming into sim racing, and uh, I mean, he'd already done like you know, a fair amount of like uh, motor racing and stuff. But uh, you know, to, to have taken that again, very big, uh, very big step. Uh, and to, to clarify, when you're saying about that, we're not talking about a sim racing championship. There. You're talking about the real deal, Casabon, and yes. why they're going through no name. Yes, no, no, no. We have plenty of esports championships, but no, that's the the real Porsche Sprint Challenge North America. Um, it was at Sebring. It was at Sebring. I forget yeah. where they were racing this uh, recently, but they, I didn't realize just uh, all the interesting tracks in America that the the Porsche Sprint North America Challenge goes to. It's slightly different from the Porsche Carrera Cup. Um, but you know, we talk about e to real. I'm just gonna I bring up 
this up all for a reason. And that is because I was talking to a driver in the Porsche Carrera Cup North America series a few years ago, Lewis, and he was telling me they need three sets of tires, basically minimum a weekend, three sets of drives. Mm -hmm. Each of those sets of tires, $4,000 a weekend. Right. If you need wet tires, of course, you add a little bit more. So let's say your tire bill is, is 20, 20K a weekend. Uh, here in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland, we're going to race across three different tracks uh, with zero tire bill. It's great. So what you're saying is we need to charge more money? Uh, as commentators, yes, for sure. Because they're okay. not paying for tires, they need to pay for us instead. Yeah, indeed. Um, I... I cost less than a set of tyres, understood. Oh, that is for sure, yes. <laughs> they're, they're probably more valuable, um, generally speaking, to a driver. So that's uh, there's at least that. Four minutes left to go in this qualifying session, so uh, there will be two laps left to go. Although I've got to say, Kazvon's already bailed from it and thinks that might well be the end of his session. Although that time has stopped at the top, so I don't know. It could also be that as we wait for this, uh, there's Benneket rolling down the hill. It could just be that he doesn't think that he's going to improve on that time because you said that Benneket may not improve on the 17-2 and he'd probably still be pretty happy with that. And I don't disagree with you as he continues to run around and makes his way up with where I think we're going to be most excited on the opening lap to see if Benneker can be challenged. If Benneker gets a good run, though, out of turn one, it's kind of what I was saying before, drafting these cars not that strong, he should be able to hold the lead into this next chicane at the top of the hill. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, I, I get a feeling that they'll go on the attack. The Timo Casabon might go on the attack straight away. Saw the, uh, the results there. That Benneker uh, comfortably on that pole position. Casabon... <sighs> It'll be a copy and paste of what we were saying before the Hockenheim ring race. You've, if, if you want to win this race, you've got to go on the attack immediately. You can't sort of wait around and, and hope for the best. Is look at those results, and indeed, Benneke now still 100% successful in terms of pole positions in the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland campaign. Thibaut Kazma going to slot in alongside, and then the second Miles driver right behind his teammate, Moritz Lohner, Yuri Toman, line up third and fourth positions with Christopher Dambis, Mikhail Schmiedel, Lucas Matea, and then Nico Nuninghoff, the top uh, four rows, and those that you expect to see draft keep relatively close given the margins, one thousandth between Lohner and Toman. Then Egger, who did indeed get those technical issues resolved to be down in ninth in front of Joachim Thunder and Flavio Tusit. Eleven drivers ready to rumble here in the R Den. Should be a fun race as well. I really, as much as I was complaining a little bit about Spa earlier, it it produces some good racing, Lewis. And there's a look at the start line where the drivers will be focused. A climb up in towards turn number one, which actually I think in some ways gives you a little bit more confidence in rolling onto the power and and getting away from the line. Yeah, indeed. The thing is that if you get any wheel spin or stuff coming off the line, then uh, it actually hurts an awful lot more than a, than a, a, a normal um, flat start. It's quite, it's, it's fairly steep up here. It's not crazy steep, but it's, it's fairly steep. Uh, obviously, then you go through T1, you start that big descent. It's about two kilometers again, braking zone to braking zone, T1 to uh, to Le Com. Um, I mean, I know you say slipstream is not, not, not super mega extreme, but I still think that it should be enough for Thibaut Casbon to at least get a, a shot, at least get a chance. Um, to uh, to run down uh, again for Benneke, that is uh, as much as the second pole of the day. It's a uh, what is it? It's the seventh consecutive pole position in the Paul Seasports Career Cup Deutschland. So um, yeah, fair enough. Have you gone back <laughs> into the previous season as well? I know it was no. eye racing, but are we factoring no, that actually. in too? No, no, I'm not. I I'm literally just talking about here on uh, on Red Sport. So um, I don't even want to. I, I don't even want to go back in. I, I, no. I, you know, I do actually have those stats somewhere. Yes, I know, because we compiled them, didn't we, at the start of the season? I've got no idea where it is. And this is the thing is that now we've got like so many spreadsheets, they're all just hidden all over the place. This is where you need someone who's good with uh, with spreadsheets and data, like Dara Thacker, to actually come through and, 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 and pull out the assist. Well, uh, the, the issue isn't being good with spreadsheets. The issue is the fact that we have so many spreadsheets that we've lost it in the mountain of spreadsheets. So do we need a spreadsheet to manage our spreadsheets? No, the do, answer do is no. Do you not have a spreadsheet to manage your spreadsheets? No, absolutely not. I have Google Drive to I've manage got a, my spreadsheets. I've got, I've, got, I've got a spreadsheet that manages my spreadsheets and managing the spreadsheets. Oh, look at you. So Inception. nerdy. That's not true. I actually don't have that. Uh, I just have a lot of spreadsheets that are called untitled spreadsheet that has data which I really want on it. And I don't nice. know which one's which. So, so now I found my spreadsheet, by the way. Nice. Um, if we keep saying spreadsheet on this, this is going to get really confusing for everyone. It's, just, it's, it's not a real word anymore, is it? Uh, well, I think Porsche just got uh, picked up on what I was trying to put down. Porsche XL uh, Cup when? Porsche Esports XL Cup. I mean, they do do spreadsheet 
esports in the in the real world, you know. Uh, I'd be up for that. Now, my spreadsheet, unfortunately, doesn't give me qualifying. It does tell me, though, that in how many... <laughs> how many races was it, was it in the previous season? 14 races in 2021. Max Benneker won how many of them? Seven. Legitimately half the races he competed in. He finished second in another five of them. And then in two races, he finished sixth and seventh. So he's just, you know... He's just that guy in this championship. Absolutely. See now, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna try and find out what year was it? Was it? Was it twenty? What was it? Twenty one. Was the last season? It was twenty one. It was uh, when see, he was still redline and Pinto had just joined. I have the session IDs and uh, a link to those. I did not compile it into my spreadsheet properly though. <laughs> so and I don't have access to iRacing on this laptop. So uh, no. Uh, <laughs> this, is how, well, this is how people know that commentators sometimes actually have to do some preparation. Yeah, well, we have, to be fair, most of the time, uh, if a commentator says anything, we just make it up on the spot. So, um, at least... Stop that. giving our secrets away. That's fine. Um, it's fine. We've got 45 seconds before we go into the race. Is Benica going to run away with this like he did in the previous one? Yes. Um, I'm trying not to ask you that question if you couldn't tell this time around. Because I'm just going to say yes. Um, yeah, well, and because I think I agree with you on the answer. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I will say uh, I've looked at the, um, the there's a, a channel points predictor in, in there's obviously yeah, for, 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 for people to vote on on who they think um, is going to win. Uh, Six thousand four hundred and seventy points have been spent on Max Benneker. Uh Zero points have been spent on Casabon. Zero points have been spent on Lerner. Zero points have been spent on Toman. Zero points have been spent on Dan Beats. One thousand six hundred points though have been spent on someone else. Who? I, I want to know who our Porsche who? community thinks can win that wasn't already just named. Um, wow, that that is clearly someone that's seen the Vegas odds and gone. You know what? There's 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 good value somewhere else. Who is is really the question I'm wondering? Mikel Schmiedel, maybe Matea. I don't know, mate. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm I, lost by that. I, I, it, it's baffling. I mean, to be fair, um, maybe it's because it's written as Max E. Benneker on there. Uh, Max Benneker is going to win. I don't know. Scientifically so, speaking, I'm, I'm confused. I, I've opened up this link that you've sent me, Lewis. Um, was that for the final race in the season? Uh, yes, that was for the final race of, of, uh, of 2021. Uh, uh, anyway, you've got, you got a race to talk about, mate, because here we go. Well, that was Max Benneker on pole once again. That's why oh, I wanted God. to bring it up. It's just a streak that continues. And now Max Benneker already one step closer to the championship, to defending his crown. We'll wait for the lights to build. We're ready to go once again. 30 seconds left on the clock as the drivers sit there and wait. Lewis, I mean, we're not expecting much to happen at the front. What can those behind, though, do to put the pressure onto the mouse driver in the speed yellow machine? Uh, the RAG drivers need to be in second and third. That's the important bit. Morris Lerner will know that. He'll try and sneak his way past. He'll try and get himself in the second position. As soon as he does so, uh, this event may well be over. Here come the lights. Here come the engines. Ready to go for the second of three races in the final of the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. Pretty good start from the front row, not just from your leader, but also from the outside. As up to the opening corner we go. But Benek is able to fade to the left, break on the racing line, and carry his speed down out of La Source. Behind him, Casabon, Loner, Toman, single file amongst them all as we rumble down towards Eau Rouge and Radion. And this seemingly going to be a nine lap race that sees the driver have their opportunities to make the most of these times over the top of the crest a little bit unstable there but here comes the draft out of line goes Mikel Schmiedel yeah Schmiedel and Danby's battled on the very first lap they obviously got into a little bit of hot water race control it was uh, adjudicated as a racing incident between the pair of them at the hairpin uh, back in the Hockenheim ring what will we get here is Dan Beats uh, on the inside it's Schmiedel uh, well now on the inside as they work their way through uh, the uh, Lacombe chicane and now through Malmody uh, and it is going to be Schmiedel ahead of Dan Beats and Look at the up and under coming from the mode grey of Luca Matea. A nice opportunistic move. Dan Beats might lose another position, and indeed he does. Mode grey Matea on forward and now hoping to try and one by one maybe move up forward to try and get up to Toman in fourth. That would be the first driver that he'd really want to try and work past as behind. Looks like we're going to see Tusa and Egger go side by side for a moment as the 
Three drivers behind, lose track of your leaders as we work down out of Poo on, on this opening lap. Four tenths already, the margin up front for Thibaut Casamon as he hunts down Max Benneker. But I think as expected, Lewis, no charge at the front on the opening lap and still waiting to see if RAG can make it two and three out in positions. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, uh, yeah, Toman's not able to find his way past Lerner. They had a great battle in the previous race, and you can see how close Toman is to the rear end of Moritz Lerner in that battle for third position. Uh, but at the moment, I've got to say, I'm very impressed with Tilo Casbon, who's really asserting himself as the lead RHG driver um, in this championship. We were seeing flashes of him in ESLR1, but um, yeah, particularly towards the end uh, of the main season, and obviously uh, in the event that we're having today, He's looking like, yeah, he's, he's throwing the gauntlet down to be like, I am number one in this, uh, in this RAG team. Of course, no Marcel Cincic, uh, yeah, Hungarians aren't uh, yeah, available to join into the Porsche Sports Career Cup Deutschland. But um, no, I, just, I, I find that very interesting with how strong Casabon's been getting in this championship. And I wonder, right, in, in, as well, wasn't he a late addition to, to the ESLR1 squad for RAG? Yes. Only joined late in the spring. So, you know, he's still in some ways, uh, I don't want to say a rookie, but less well-versed maybe than, than Benneke, uh, Loner and Toman, who uh, were there right from the drop of the, the green flag at the start of the ESLR1 campaign last year. So you're right. And something that we had talked about, I think it was, at Orchard Road, maybe, or maybe it was Road Atlanta, one of the two, but we, we were talking a lot about how Yuri Toman, Tire Whisperer, he would come on strong at the end, but no, it was actually Thibaut Casabon that was making up time towards the end, so it's one of those things, Lewis, where we are kind of seeing a changing of the guard. We've seen a handful of retirements to open up 2024 in the world of sim racing. Yeah, indeed. Um, it's not us, though, uh, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, I did see Benneker, by the way, tried to break the slipstream from Thibaut Casabon there going into Lake Com. Uh, pulled it over to the right-hand side, then back over to the left. Just trying to, you know, pull the snake around. Um, you know, try and, try and pull uh, uh, Casabon all the way over to, to one side of the circuit and then back. Uh, obviously, Lerner Toman. Schmiedel is keeping well in tow, well in check. This is a, a longer train than what we saw in the previous race. So obviously, um, we saw Schmiedel and Dan Beats battle in the opening stages uh, back in Hockenheim. Ring, and that actually separated the, 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 the group and allowed the top four to check away. We're not seeing that here. Um, it's pretty much one big train down probably to Nuninghoff. Yes, I think you are correct in that the draft extends down to eighth. Yeah, uh, still got plenty of laps to go after this. At some point, I'm sure we will see some separation, but not seeing these drivers use this draft to, to get close enough to, to one another. They are really on the edge. You're seeing plenty of... Uh, rear end sliding as the drivers almost drift these cars through certain corners just trying to get the most from them and that's where we often talk about the balance of the tires there's a, a delicate line to, to tread you want to slide a little bit don't want to slide too much put too much energy through the tires heat them up and in the case of Moritz Lona there in the Riviera blue car it seems ran a little bit wide for a moment out of Blanchemont Ah, oh, so there's some pressure building because uh, Schmiedel is trying to uh, to attack the rear end of Toman again. Just to uh, to remind you, uh, the race as things stand, the champ will not be over um, because uh, Casabon will still have a will we'll still be within it by two points. If Moritz Lerner gets through into second position, it will be over after this race by our mats. So yes. this is that. Uh, Sorry, by, by your mats actually. I'm Never trust the one. commentator's math. Yeah. Um, did, did we just say that if Morris Lona, Morris Lona finishes second, the championship is over? I think so. Yeah. Uh, because I don't quite remember how they entered this race, but I think you are correct. Anyway, back to the action at hand. There's Lona defensive because here comes Yuri Toman. Mint green machine around the outside and leaning on one another. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know how Toman was sideways there. Don't know how he caught onto his car, but Mikel Schmiedel had a good view of it. His gold metallic entry is going to roar his way on through. Mistake there for Toman's cost him big. Yeah, I think that might be a slowdown or something, uh, some description to Yuri Toman uh, causing him to drop back behind uh, Schmiedel. Will we have any issues with Matea behind as well? They work their way through uh, no name, um, X or speakers, depending on which name you of, of the many you want to give the corner that apparently has no name. Uh, and now down into Puan. Once again, that gap is growing like we saw in the previous race. Once it starts ballooning out, it got to uh, to within a second fairly quickly. And Benneker, like I say, it's uh, he, he's seeming to check out once more. It's, uh, it's hovering around the 8 tenth margin. I don't think Casamon's got the pace. Six, ten, uh, six laps rather next time by to go and that gap holds around six tenths at the line that's where we've kind of seen the draft be 
somewhat effective after that does seem as though it starts to balloon on up so they sweep back to the right climb up towards Blanchemont one more time Kazamon going to be urging his car on as sweeping out wide that was uh, I believe is that uh, uh, Dan Beats making a mistake or Nuninghoff I think it was uh, I think it might have been Dan Beats we'll have to wait and see here's a replay though as to what happened bit of side by side contact and uh, what happened I mean that contact just kind of like caused a bit of a slide there I, oh, I don't know how Yuri Tone was able to catch that one. He obviously gets the slowdown penalty uh, doing that, which is what uh, what he has to lift off and allow uh, the other car to pass. Oh, and the drive straight to the back of him. Oh, Yuri. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't the spot. What happened, by the way, to give him the slowdown is also what got him sideways because he was just a bit too aggressive with how much of the inside he cut. And so that bobbled his car because it's quite an aggressive uh, ride when you bounce off of the curb. And so uh, that's where the car bounced around on him did a great job to save it but yeah he's down to fifth now and uh, red lines Mikel Schmiedel the one that moves forward to fourth and uh, we're going to call him out once again we only have 11 here today instead of the 12 that we expected because Enzo Benito uh, not joining us uh, so Schmiedel now the best of the red line drivers although maybe only momentarily in fourth because here comes Yuri Toman sliding his way forward yeah, indeed, and uh, wisely not fought too hard there uh, because the thing is, is fighting is going to cost you time and uh, maybe it's still the odd aspiration of getting themselves onto the podium and uh, Schmiedel can you hear he to maybe bridge that gap. Obviously, you do have Dan Beats and Matea behind, but yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, at the moment, it is going to be that fight really probably between Lerner and Kazabon. probably going to be the highest fight that we're going to get in this race just because of where uh, Benek has ended up. I mean, this race might well do it. I mean, I don't re really recall what the tie break is, but if even if it's a race win in the main season or even in the race win today, uh, yeah, Benek has got it because Lerner has not won a race in the, uh, in the in the main season, and he certainly hasn't won one today. Yeah, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and find the math and, and, and make sure because it could very well be, unless race control intervenes, that Benek is on course to defending his championship and with a race to go, that would give him a lot of comfort you'd feel. There's, of course, though, the driver's trying to close back up to those at the front that have been slowly pulling away. It is now a full second between the top two. Moritz Lerner, then a further Ooh. second behind as well. And uh, just in a note from Race Control, Moritz Lerner has been told by Race Control to give up one position for forcing another driver off the track. So Lerner will actually end up having to, uh, to fall behind um, Yuri Tobin here, which is why he's dropping back more into the clutches. And you'll see him uh, hold to the right-hand side here. And that's what's going to allow Yuri Tobin to, uh, to fire his way past. I was obviously in that contact going through the chicane and there's a bit of contact from the uh, from, from Schmiedel onto the rear end of Lerner as well. Nice. And I think now basically first and second, don't think we're going to be worried about those changing hands too much. Instead, I think it's behind Yuri Toman where you can see everyone stacked up. It's going to be plenty of focus as to who's going to fight their way on forward. Schmiedel, Lohner, Dan Beats, Matea, Nuninghoff dropped, uh, dropped off the back though. So it is only five as they run out of last source. A two kilometer stretch as well would be flat in a GT3 car, but this is not flat. Coming down through Eau Rouge, rising over the top of Radion in these cup cars. A little bit sideways there for Moritz Lona. You could tell just how on the limit they are. A little bit of loss of momentum. Don't think it's going to compromise him, though. Should hold off Schmiedel up on the run to the top of the Kemmel. Yeah, indeed, the tight fight for that uh, final step onto the podium. And I say as much as Schmieder was trying to fill the mirrors there um, of Moritz Lerner, there was no chance for him to uh, to actually make that move. Gap for the race is now 1.2 seconds. Like I said, I don't think we're going to see any switches there. It's uh, a fair way back then to this fight. Dan Beat's not quite as strong maybe around here as he was back in the Hockenheim ring. But to be fair, he is kind of dragging Matea back into this fight for the podium. We could have a five-car fight here for who is going to be on that final step of the podium. And again, it does make a difference. You know, these 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 places with inside the, uh, the, the, the the points paying positions, or they're all points paying positions. Uh, but the more points you score, obviously, the higher position you finish in the championship. I know that's crazy. I wanted to drop that one there for you, Arjuna. But there is prize money up for grabs. The higher you finish in the championship, the more prize money you get. No, 100%. Casbon, Loner, and Toman. Those are the drivers you'd think mostly in with a chance, but Mikel Schmiedel, 10 points behind Thibaut Casbon coming into this race at Spa. That could be. Uh, ending up the difference between getting second in this race and Kazamon dropping down and having a similar sort of result in our final race at Road Atlanta. Benek has checked off, by the way. I don't think we're going to be too worried about him. And again, no man's land for Kazabon. Ride right on board with Schmiedel. Always enjoy seeing the setups of the drivers and wondering how, you know, these competitive esports drivers find time to use a handbrake that's then mounted on their sim rig. 
Yeah, it's not for this kind of race now, is it? That's for rallycross racing, or if you want to uh, open up a little cheeky bit of RBR, um, which is uh, which is my neck of the woods. Or of course, more recently, EA Sports WRC. But let's be honest, RBR still the goat um, in that uh, in that category. But uh, yeah, that's, that's why the handbrake's there. It's, yeah, it's, it's much better than pressing a button on your wheel, mate. True. Uh, or what some people do is they like map the clutch on their you know actual pedals to it. Uh, because... You can't do that. No, you should never do that. But you yeah, people would. People have. I've heard it before. That's um, horrendous. Yes, uh, we all do enjoy a little bit of sideways action, by the way, especially in a Porsche 911. Uh, rear wheel drive, rear engine car. Uh, do you want trouble? The answer is yes. Uh, you've got your, your option. Now that, that's an interesting line for Yuri Toman. Four wheels to the inside. I don't think that's going to give him a slowdown, but definitely saw him unsettled, out of shape. And here comes Loner back forward, trying to get to third position after race control told him to give the position up. Moritz Loner tells Yuri Toman, give me third back as much as you'll try and switch it back from underneath me. I've got that position on lock. Excellent fight between these two. Lerner, Toman, and uh, like I say, Schmidl looking for the opportunity behind. Was it was definitely eyeing something up there going down towards uh, Malmody, but you can see his mirrors are fairly full of damn beats, and you know uh, that if uh, if Schmidl goes for something on Toman here, if he doesn't, if he's not successful in that move, Dan Beats is going to try something on him. So that's kind of the whole thing. You've got to be very careful when you go for a move that you actually make sure that you complete the pass uh, because those half-hearted ones, for one, they're the most likely to cause incident, uh, but for, you know, for, for, for the most part, it's going to leave you open uh, to that car behind, which is kind of why when Toman goes for a move on, uh, on Lerner, he also has to be fully committed with doing it. It will be three laps to go next time by. Again, as it sits right now, Benneke first, Kazabon second. Benneke will have a 18-point uh, championship advantage going into the final race of our finals. A win worth 20 points. You do the math. Doesn't have to do much when we make our way over to Road Atlanta to come out on top. Although, Road Atlanta, the site of Let's Be Real, the two DNFs so far this season for Benneke and the site of maybe some unhappiness. Behind... Is Yuri Toman quick enough to put Moritz Lohner under pressure? Is Moritz Lohner quick enough to close the gap to Thibaut Kazabon and to make something happen in, again, the fight for second, third, and fourth in the championship? Yeah, indeed. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think either of them are, are, are that much quicker than the other, which means that I think the battle between the pair of them is going to be very close. Which is, again, it's exactly what you want. Um, you know, it's, it's not fun if everyone's on, like, uh, everyone's separated by the pace that Benneker is to the rest of the field, because uh, he do not really get much racing. These two are basically on identical pace. We've seen them race time and time again um, in uh, ESLR1. Uh, and again, when you when you talk with these two drivers, they do kind of come from different areas of the sim racing world. I mean, uh, Obviously, Morris Lerner built himself up by uh, by being one of the best drivers on race room. Uh, you know, Yuri Toman comes more from the R Factor 2 scene. Uh, Schmiedel is more from the R Factor 2 scene as well, to be perfectly honest. A lot of these drivers they probably won't have raced each other that much outside of on wrench which is so exciting to see. As once again, Toman looks to the inside but doesn't commit to a move. No, it... it it's, it's what you said earlier, right? You don't want to go for a move that you don't think you're going to get because then it might drop you even further down the order. And I think the last thing Yuri Toman wants to do now, already five points behind Thibaut Kazabon for second in the championship, doesn't want to leave himself even further adrift because that would mean basically he will be out of the contention for second and he would be then just fighting for third with Moritz Lohner in, in front of him. So, we'll of course, talk about the standings heading into race three after... Race controls had their final determinations. Never say never. There could be a couple more things for them to look at. But as a whole, you know, often, Lewis, especially in endurance races, if we're being honest, we often talk about how race control's been very, very busy. Race control's been quite quiet over the course of this season. They won't be complaining, will they? Well, actually, do you know what? I think it is a little bit. But I think they will be complaining a little bit. Because you just sat back being like... Can someone do something? Can someone do something really stupid just so we have something to like talk about and discuss? Because when you stand back, you're just like, nothing's happening. Everyone's just driving really well, which is obviously, you know, it is a great thing. Now that's, that's, that's the important bit. That no one's making a mistake. No one's doing anything silly. Everyone's driving well within themselves. Uh, and the battling that we're getting very rarely is there any sort of problem. You know, they may have to look into it, but nothing really majorly. That's a big slide there from, uh, from Yuri Toman in the mint green uh, going through Blanchemont. But yeah, I think, I think race control, they'll be being like, come on. Do something. Mm, no, I, 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 I personally, um, my opinion is uh, I would never want to get involved in drama. 
And so when I don't have to get involved with race control, no drama. I love the sound of that. We're at the point, though, you mentioned, you know, how much Yuri Toman's sliding around. I'll call you out a little bit. You've, you've called Yuri Toman the tire whisperer uh, on a well, handful of occasions. He, that's again, but you've called him a tire whisperer. He doesn't seem like he's enjoying the balance of this car as much. This is the whole thing we were talking about pre-show. Again, this, these are all fixed setups. Um, and, you know, some drivers like the car. Some drivers will not like the car. That's fine. That's how it goes. Um, it doesn't clearly work out to Yuri Toman's uh, you know, capabilities behind the wheel. You know, not to say that he's not a capable driver. He certainly is. But he is going to be uh, capable of maybe taking over third position here to the outside of Lake Com. He's going to go committed onto the brake straight around the outside. Oh, that is a beautiful move. Oh, it was spectacular. Loner gives him a shove uh, just as they work towards Malmody. But, I mean, audacious, audacious under the brakes. I don't think Moritz Loner could really have done much there. Beautifully judged by Toman, back up to third. And that might bring him closer in the fight again for second in the championship. I mean, I say that was, that was brilliant from uh, from Toma. I was actually a little bit concerned about the second look there from uh, from Lerner, but uh, I got to say, the next time we go racing, which will be at Road Atlanta, I wonder what kind of style of racing we're going to get in there. It's going to be very difficult for the moves uh, to be made straight oh, away with the uh, with the action replay. Thanks, Hugo. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I for a second there, I thought, you know what? Lona's in a spot where he'll keep it side by side. Did he think he was going to be able to cut back underneath and go the long way around through Malmody? Because that's a brave way to try and get the move back. No, I mean, I, I, I was I, I was kind of expecting, like I said, the up and under um, from him because I think he expected Toman had overcooked it into Lake Comp, but uh, clearly didn't. Uh, and now, like I said, the opportunities are, uh, are fairly low. Um, and, and yes, maybe it's a, a five uh, five brain strategy from Lerner to, to go on the attack on this time because he's obviously going to get a run into Lake Comp uh, as long as he's close enough this time. But what we've typically seen is once the moves happen, it takes a couple laps to get back in the window. So he may yeah. well have, uh, if, if he's tried playing it tactically, he's left too late. I don't think it is a tactical thing. I think it's just that's that's just a move that Tobin pulled off and it was brilliant. Oh, anyway, onto the uh, final lap of the race. It was a move pulled off right after we were talking about just how much his tyre seemingly cooked as well. So maybe the commentator is the only thing cooked here today. Here in the Ardennes, though, one more lap to go and our longest track around the season. It's a good seven odd kilometres, but I've just done the math, Lewis, with only 11 here today. There, of course, no 12th driver. That means the worst that Benica could finish in our final. 11th place. What does 11th pay out? Two points. I think mathematically, there is no way for any yeah. driver not named Max Benner to be crowned champion if it holds as it is. Again, that takes someone far smarter behind the scenes to uh, to run the old Mathuru uh, on that one. Uh, we are not smart enough. Uh, another uh, penalty, by the way, that's come out in this. Uh, Schmieder will be getting a five-second time penalty post-race for exceeding instant point limits. That will come down to track limits and, uh, and car contact and such. So he'll actually uh, drop back even behind Matea. So Schmieder will drop down to seventh position post-race. And I think if there were any hopes of him finishing third in the championship, that's probably them done and dusted. It's Dan Beats that will take the impetus they were tied on 17 points coming into this one in a tie for fifth so we'll see what will happen at road atlanta one uh, final race still left to come but a race that seemingly going to be a bit more academic and i hope that's going to be uh, mean a bit more intensity across the board see if benica's going to get challenged we'll see what casabon's going to be able to do and clearly based on the first two races so far lewis if tebow casabon performs well in qualifying he needs to be aggressive at the start of the next race if he wants to grab the lead and try and hold on i'm going to lay down the gauntlet uh so any uh, max benneker friends pass it on uh you know you've already you've, you might well tie it up in a in a few moments time last to first challenge then at road atlanta get on it oh can surely. you imagine well i, mean, I can't i can't imagine i can imagine him doing it for road atlantic off you go son drive of a champion that would be as well wouldn't it i mean we'll go back to the record books at some time to go see what a run it's been for max benneker in terms of polls in terms of victory but he's been the dominant force in this porsche esports carrera cup deutschland championship mathematically it's locked and loaded benneker with a sigh of relief as he defends this championship here in the porsche esports carrera cup deutschland still one more race to go the job's not done but lewis what a fantastic drive it's been so far this season.
he's honestly just not barely put a foot wrong. Uh, I mean, even the race victory, the, the, the first time that we didn't see him win uh, in this championship wasn't even his fault. That was uh, back in Orchard Road. He got tapped by Yuri Toman. Uh, went out wide. Patrick Holtzman came through and took the victory. Fair enough. That ended the streak. And then Road Atlanta, things went wrong. But you could arguably say that it wasn't really you know his fault with how things went wrong in the in the qualifying race he's barely put a foot wrong and again when it matters just completely dominant and still looks as calm as ever quick swig of the water and now we'll make the trip across the pond to get ready to go racing here's the look at the results benica two and a half seconds clear from tebow casbon after just uh, nine laps of racing there come the rest of the drivers to the end and we'll get a final confirmation of the final race results in a few moments time which should of course also include the uh, penalty for Mikel Schmiedel five seconds to be added to his time so should be Benica, Kasbon, Toman, Lohner and then Dan beats Matea, Schmiedel, Nuninghoff, Joachim Thunder, Flavio Tusit and Lucas Egger the 12 in the field take a sigh of breath and relax for a little bit lewis uh josh rogers mitchell de young they were hoping for a bit more of a crazy race at spa don't think we necessarily got that but we did get some great passes it was more entertaining than hockenheim rink uh that's fine um but yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't put it you know it wasn't full edge of you see action but uh you know like i say it was, it, it was more entertaining we obviously had the uh we had josh rogers going through now so what if we get uh mitchell de young this time giving us a little bit of uh, a little bit of analysis as to as to what the dealio was there or maybe sticking both together who knows they're both quite good at driving i think not not bad drivers are they and i tell you what it's better that they analyze the race than we do let's throw it back over to the porsche stuttgart brand center and hear from lisa and the porsche coanda esports team thank you so much arjuna and lewis this was one crazy race one more time Mitchell now, not both of them, but I'm very excited to hear your opinion on these nine labs in Virtual Spa. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, yeah, as we touched on, we thought it was going to be a little bit more hectic, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, overall, it was a really nice race, I think. Turn one was really clean. There was a nice battle into Lacombe under the first lap. Um, I think it was Dambiets that uh, lost out a li little bit on that, but still overall really nice. Um, yeah, I think we were uh, in for a really good race there. We were, for sure. And uh, looking at the first half of the race, um, at least we had um, two teams dominating there. Maus and RGA were really up on front. Yeah, even though it's not really like a team championship, yeah. still you practice with your teammates in this. So, um, yeah, it was probably pretty nice that they wanted to get ahead of each other and have two of their cars on the same team together. Um, but, yeah, it's still always a little bit of a team game there. Let's have a look at the winner of this one. And as we heard from Arjuna and Lewis already, probably the winner of this year's PCCD, Max Benecke. Again, what a dominant performance there. Another two and a half second gap almost. Where does he take it from? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't really uh, fault the guy at all. Uh, this whole event, he was super strong. And you can see in qualifying when he knocked out that lap time that stood pulled to the end right in the beginning of the session. That's a really telling sign for how comfortable he was at this track, especially, mm -hmm. and that he was able to just eke out the gap, get out of the draft range from uh, Thibaut, um, and just drive away. Uh, it's really impressive. You can't uh, fault him at all. So, um, yeah, well done to him. And impressive as well was the fight for P3 on this one, especially for uh, Luna, Schmiedel and Thoman, at least for the most part of the race. How did you assess or how are you assessing that one? Yeah, I think it was um, quite an impressive drive from Thoman. He had uh, quite a lot going on with getting the slowdown penalty, mm -hmm. battling uh, earlier on in the race. Uh, and managing to come back a little bit uh, and make the overtake into third in the end. That's uh, really strong. It looked like he was struggling a little bit on tires at the end, but still managed to get all those moves done. So, uh, yeah, seriously impressive. Um, made for some entertaining racing. Some really nice battling there. Uh, they were running really close, uh, rubbing his racing, as Josh uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, and that's what we like to see. Especially a beautiful move in lap eight. Maybe you can walk us through that one a little bit. Yeah, you could kind of tell that he was 
uh, working on that one for a while. Mm -hmm. Both him and Moritz were swapping back and forth the yes. laps prior. And uh, yeah, it came to be kind of a perfect opportunity for him to make that move around the outside of Lacombe. That's, that's really not easy. Um, you need a lot of respect from both drivers to actually give enough room to not uh, have an incident. Um, but it's kind of whoever's the bravest on the brakes. It was a uh, Yuri that time. Um, but yeah, it takes two to tango and both of them kind of left us with a really impressive race. So now we can take two of the three races of this final race day of this year's uh, PCCD. And we already heard that mathematically Max Benecke has already the win in the back. How difficult is it now to, you know, refocus for the last one to pull out a really strong performance on that one as well? Yeah, for Max now, I would say it's going to be a uh, stress-free race. He can kind of just do whatever he wants, uh, have some fun, hopefully. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'd love to go for the win. I'm sure that's what he'll try to do. Uh, we're all super competitive. We always want to win no matter what. Obviously. Uh, so I'm sure that's going to be the case. But Road Atlanta is a really difficult one, super difficult to get right over the curbs in qualifying. Um, and it's going to be important for the drivers that are battling for second and third to yeah, really hook up some good laps. Um, this is where they can uh, make some big moves and uh, earn themselves some extra money. We did speak about Road Atlanta in the Porsche brand store here before. Uh, not everyone in the stream obviously uh, was, was able to, uh, to follow here. And you mentioned how tricky this one is. Maybe you can share with us the specialties this track has to it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, Road Atlanta is super difficult with the curbs. Uh, you know, qualifying now that they have 15 minutes, it's a bit easier to hook up a lap. Uh, it's easy to invalidate your lap, so uh, getting a good one hooked up is super important. Uh, they have a few chances now, um, but it's also extremely difficult to pass, so you need to get yourself in a good qualifying spot. Um, if you don't, uh, you really need to <laughs> yeah. set yourself up for the long back straightaway into uh, one of the last corners of the track, um, into a chicane. So. It's uh, a tricky one to get it done, also is, uh, takes big commitment. Um, and it's a track where you can burn up your tires as well really easily, so a lot of things to manage. So it's gonna be interesting. Definitely gonna be interesting. We can't wait for that final and third race of the day. Thank you so much for the moment, Mitchell. And that's it for here, for now, <laughs> from Stuttgart, giving it back to the studio. Thanks, guys. And well, Lewis, you and I, in the couple of minutes that we've just been sitting and reflecting on Max Benecke mathematically wrapping up the championship, we've dived into the history books. We found the last time Max Benecke wasn't on pole in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. Yeah, it was um, a, a couple of years back, uh, obviously. It was the 1st of August, 2021, which was round four uh, of the championship at the Nürburgring. Is the, that is the first uh, or the most recent time that Benneker wasn't on pole position. So if he does indeed um, listen to me and does a last to first challenge, yes. doesn't qualify in this one, then technically, you know, he's he's, he's breaking his streak. It's what is. Did it's it. crazy as well because we went through all eight races that we had all eight events i should say that we had in 2021 and that was the only race that he didn't get pole in so it, it just goes to show as well how important qualifying can be to really solidify your space in the race because that was also when we you know back in uh the i racing era inverted through the top eight and stuff so qualifying at the front didn't always mean you would start at the front but gives you that opportunity to, to build a basis lewis and also just regardless of whether it's open or fixed setup qualifying well usually means you're going to race well yeah, exactly. And let's be honest, Red Atlanta is a really tricky track to work your way through uh, yeah, from the back. So like, like I said, if, if you qualify well, you've got the pace, especially in sprint racing. It's not like an endurance racing where um, if you don't quite have the pace uh, in qualifying, the way you drive in qualifying, the way you drive in the race is completely different uh, in this. I mean, there's the whole thing of, you know, you, you, you might sit back and go, Benek is the fastest driver on the grid and also is the best on his tires. How's that possible? And that's because speed doesn't necessarily translate to using more tires or overheating your tires more. You're just using more of the available grip. Um, and, and, and to be fair, it's, you, you hear it all the time, smooth is fast. Uh, I mean, clearly Benek in this, with the way this car is, the way this car's set up, the way he's driving it, he's got a very smooth approach in this car, which has worked uh, wonders throughout the season. And the, I think the most incredible thing, Arjuna, is that it's worked on every track we've been to so that's scary 
it's not many weaknesses in the game of Max Benica right now. I think that is the, the way to look at it. And, uh, well, this is the one track that he said wasn't necessarily looking forward to the most. Let's go dive into our track guide all about the Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. So let's take a look then at the final circuit from the main season here in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. It is, of course, Road Atlanta, an absolute classic and staple in the world of motorsport. Broke ground in 1969, opened in 1970, and has 12 of the most iconic corners in the world of motorsport. 4.1 kilometers all the way around, uh, obviously divided up into the standard three sectors as we expect. The first one being incredibly short, the second one having the most corners in it, and the third with that best overtaking opportunity. Turn one, really tricky, very fast, going up the hill as you begin that climb towards turn two, going through the blind turn three, pull it back over to the right-hand side as we descend through the S's, back up towards turn five and throw it in a high speed. Six and seven, potentially underrated and underestimated by some of the drivers. Turn seven is one of the most important corners on the circuit because it leads all the way down towards the chicane at 10A and 10B, the best overtaking opportunity around Road Atlanta. And let's just not talk about corner numbers here. Um, let's not do that. We managed to avoid doing it on Thursday at the Red Bull Ring in the Porsche Esports Canada world because Lewis wasn't on oh, commentary. Oh, that's so true. Um, no, I lie, Lewis. We did it. We did it at least once. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just. I, I, I hadn't thought that that was the one that I missed. Um, great shout. Uh, no, we will talk about corner numbers around here because they're a joke, and we also have five minutes. Um, until we get into uh, into qualifying, um, so we can really discuss the uh, for, for what is an unbelievable circuit. You know, this is uh, again we, we've said before. This is in my top five. Um, it's one of the best in the world. Yes, best, we're both best, on, best that race page. on the planet. Yep, it does commit a crime in the sense of turn one, two, and three are absolutely fine, and then if you go through the S's, which is a whole load of corners, and then you end up in turn five. Which is very confusing. Uh, yeah, and then you have the mess at the end of the lap as well. Yeah. Turn 10, A, 10, B. How do you have an, a 10, A and 10, B? To me, A and B would make sense if it's like Malmody, right? Well, not Malmody. Uh, what's the one at Spa with the double apex sometimes that you V it out? You know what I'm saying? Down the hill? Uh, Bruce Hells. Ravage. Yeah, depending on what Brussels. you call it. Brussels, yeah, you, Brussels is the current name for it. Revage is the cool name for it. You know exactly what I'm saying though, right? Like it, oh, that's yeah. what that you could have it for that, right? Where it's the first part of the corner is one thing, the second part's another. But that's, oh, but that's an interesting line through turn one and a big old smash for I can't quite tell who that was. Uh, I, I, I'll double check in a second. Uh, I believe um, I, I was going to say it was Yuri Toman, but I wasn't 100 sure. Yeah, he is in the 18. Yeah, it was Yuri Toman. Um, so, yes, that was a, a fair crash. No, I mean, I've got to say, it's just, um, like you say, 10 a 10 B. I think there is there is no excuse to put in letters into a into a turn number. I know Hungaroring tries it when you go through turn one. And I think it's 1A is the slight kink before you get down into turn two, which I still maintain. It's not a corner, so don't give it a number. <laughs> and if you're that concerned about numbers and you've got all these issues where you're numbering them all wrong, there is an easy bypass. You don't call any of the uh, turns at uh, Spa numbers. Yes, they they're all have, corner names. They could have really stupid numbers, and we don't know because it doesn't matter because they've all got names. But instead, what we have at Spa is three different corner names for each corner so you're not quite sure what is the actual corner name so uh, yeah. there's that um, and campus appears depending on what track we'll be looking at in three different locations so that's fun it, uh, yeah so, so you know that there, there are issues but i think that the reality is we've decided this uh, lewis and myself we are the arbiters of truth we are going to we are creating a commentators union that is mm. going to define a standard for for track maps and uh, we're, we're going to then influence our authority on the world via our yeah. commentators union. Yeah, exactly. Coming 2027, we'll release... Uh, 27? Oh, you're, you're, you're thinking too, too far down the road. Well, we th we, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll publish actual, real, actually decent track guides uh, or track maps. Um, ADTM uh, for, uh, for all of the race circuits that we commentate on. Um, and they will have correct numbers and names, fair enough. Um, does that mean that we can name corners or is that a little bit too far? No, um, I, I'm, I'm taking that authority as part of our wow. ADTM <laughs> charter. Wow, fair enough. ADTM is, is coming soon, 2027. To a social media near you. Let's take a look <laughs> at the championship standings, by the way, how we enter this final race. And again, 
mathematically, Max Benica is locked at, in as your champion. 11th the lowest he can finish. Two points paid out there. The only thing that might actually throw a wrench into the works was to be if he gets disqualified. That would mean he gets no points, but Thibaut Kazbon, even if he was to win and Benica finishes in 11th, tiebreaker would go back to Benica's dominance over the course of the season. And that means right now we're fighting for really second and third for 8,000 for 5,000 euros. Yeah, indeed. And let's be honest, that fight is still absolutely on. I mean, look at Yuri Toman, just a single point uh, behind Moritz Lerner. So between those two, it is effectively uh, winner takes all, whoever uh, whoever beats who uh, around this road Atlanta circuit. Those uh, That's the driver that's going to win third position. They can still both sneak their way past Thibaut Kazbon. Just seven points between Moritz Lerner and Thibaut Kazbon, although with how quick and consistent Kazbon's been, including around here, obviously through the season, uh, in the main season, did take a victory around here, or a couple of victories. I, I, um, I don't know. I think Kazwon, oh, I wouldn't say he's locked into second place, but I think he'll be pretty strong for it. Yes, I think a feeling comfortable is where his mindset is going to be. And with the margin being seventh place, Moritz Lono could win. Thibaut Kazbon would then have to finish second because third would be eight points behind. So uh, we'll, we'll keep you a, a beam of all the various different championships standing uh, forms that we may have to look at. You mentioned, by the way, Max Benneker didn't grab a victory at all when we came here. It was Thibaut Kazamon that grabbed both the victories. It was Yuri Toman that sat, uh, sat second in both of those races. Christopher Dambeats, third. Loner down in fourth. I feel like the RHG pair are going to feel quite confident going into this final race in our season. And when we did catch up with them post uh, post event, they were saying about how um, confident, how comfortable they were around here, and uh, exactly what they uh, what they gained from the round. Uh, I, I mean, look, that will give them a whole uh, a whole boost coming into this race, anyway, right? The fact that they were able to um, uh, to pull out those kind of results, um, regardless. So they're they're, they're going to have a bit of boost of confidence anyway. Whether that's actually going to help them find any time uh, remains to be seen. Of course, the kind of lap times they're looking for uh, something in the mid 18s. I think it was an 18599 um, from Benneke. Toma was actually the one who qualified in second place when we raced here in the main season. And so that's the form book as the drivers roll out on track for the qualifying session. Again, just a reminder, they don't actually see one another. That's just for our benefit to be able to figure out where one uh, each car is relative to each other on the track itself as they get themselves ready to go. Remember, no tyre warm up really to, to worry about either every time they cross the line that the tires effectively get reset so they don't have to be cooling them down they also don't have to be playing games to try and get them into their uh, optimal window until it keeps it nice and easy for them the speed yellow machine though of Benica out of the tighter than 90 degree turn seven and onto the back straight away Indeed, uh, like I, said, I think it's about I think it's about 100 degrees um, through turn seven, something like that. I don't have a protractor on me, unfortunately, but um, I'm pretty sure it's quite close to that. It's, 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 it's a tight and awkward corner, and arguably, arguably the most important turn on the entire circuit because obviously the uh, the run that you get down um, into the legendary chicane. What would we call it? The Porsche chicane. There we go. Oh, no. there you go. Sold. Uh, only if we get some Porsches, though sold to the highest bidder two Porsches exactly. being said that to is you exactly and me. what ADTM will be about <laughs> uh, we're, we're open to signing preferred partnership deals uh, so that these opportunities don't go onto the market 127.8 the first time and let's be honest the, the, the lap times here are really going to just start trickling down look how much curb usage though you're going to take around this track you have to really be physical especially in these cup cars straight lining it in some ways down out of these S's on the run through turn 5 all the way up to the gravel and then bouncing over the curb as well. I don't feel that was great at T5 from uh, from Benneke. Didn't quite get enough of that curb on the left-hand side. Don't, you don't want to slap it too hard, but you do want to like kind of just rub it a little bit, particularly with the rear wheel, because you want to get that rotation coming in. Um, it seemed to understeer really aggressively at T5. Out through T7 onto the, uh, onto the back stretch as we uh, count the non-existent turns eight and nine. Of course, to be fair, Benneke last time was part of the uh, the new edition of the Porsche chicane on the start finish straight. Hopefully we'll be adding to that one today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We got we had the Porsche chicane uh, set up on the on the pitch straight <laughs> yeah, when we came here the regular season. Oh, you're gonna get me set off like a CSI Miami goggles. You can see as well there the the, the hands snapping back to the left. That is what we keep talking about in terms of managing the rear tires and 
balancing how you get onto the power and then the rear end will step around on you instantly an improvement from Benneker to a 118-881. That's a little bit more where we would expect, but I don't think that we are going to really know exactly what the final time is going to be. It was an 18.599 when we came here in qualifying when Benneker, of course, did grab pole. We'll see if he can match that lap time once more as Yuri Toman runs his way through turn three. I'm going to take a wild guess that Benica lost about the two or three tenths of a second down at T5. That is a horrific line from Lerner. Uh, even I can do better than that as he'll uh, manage to get himself back going again at... Uh Again, this is the whole thing. Uh, to remind you, if you are jumping in just for this race, you've not joined us in the previous ones, uh, do remember that that's, that slide you've just seen from Lerner. You might think, oh, his tyres are done. It's going to take him a few laps. His tyres will reset when he crosses the line. So don't worry about his, um, his position uh, when it comes to tyre wear. And that's one of those elements that, you know, we talk a lot about in, in wrench sport, and I quite like, right? We... Uh, so often in, in esports uh, and uh, across the board, not just in sim racing, we, we find uh, discussion topics around, you know, having uh, various exploits th that teams will go and find. But, you know, here it's pretty simple. Just go and drive as fast as you can every single lap and don't worry about the full contact patches underneath you. Now, still waiting for more drivers to really set fast times. Benneker down to an 18.655. So he's already with about half a tenth of what he set at the end of the regular season. And let's be real, no one in the same postcode as him right now. No, indeed. Big gap back to, uh, to Schmieder. We really need to wait and see those lap times coming in for the likes of Tone. We know Learners one wouldn't count that one after his instant coming down through the S and see what he's like this time by. Hooks over that curb, doesn't quite touch it uh, on the, what was the left hand side of the shot, right hand side of the circuit. Up now through T5, takes a little bit of that curb, gets that rotation on, uh, punches it out down towards turn six. Can't really see uh, what his reaction's like because he's decided to put his camera he, he wants to show his body off more than his face that's fine but uh, what is that thing next to him that's what we really need to figure out it looks like a teddy bear lewis it I'm does look you. like a teddy bear 100 percent. then again i once said that something looked like cardboard in the broadcast and they were like actually it was my desk and i was like oh sorry it's something that's very hard to tell when the screen's very uh very small and squashed hmm I'm, I'm now I'm trying to think i'm taking a closer look and uh I honestly teddy bear. it doesn't it honestly it looks like a teddy bear yeah uh, now I'm hoping that someone from Moritz's family will pop into chat and let us know exactly what teddy bear that is. But clearly, it's giving him a little bit of uh, mental encouragement as they head now into the final 10 minutes of the session, still waiting for drivers to get onto the board realistically. Three tenths between Benneker and Schmiedel. Is Lona going to improve? Lona will set a time. Only a tenth off his teammate, but to uh, Toman, excuse me, goes to second. Yeah, great lap time there from, uh, from Toman as well to move up into uh, within a tenth of the pole time but we do expect these lap times to get fast. The thing around here at Royal Atlanta is you do get quite a lot of them. It's the shortest lap time we deal with all day, you know, under 80 seconds um, all the way around the circuit. So you do get quite a lot of lap times in the 15-minute session. Uh, Nico Nuninghoff now into the final corner. That's a little bit wide there through 12, dropping down the uh, 80 feet of elevation uh, at the final corner as you come uh, under the bridge and then drop down the hill. Nuninghoff's lap time still not counting. It's both he uh, and, and, and Flavio Tusit that have not set uh, lap times in in this session right now so again just to reiterate 11 drivers in the field Benneka just has to not be disqualified he'll be classified whether he finishes or not as long as he's not disqualified and the championship would be his but again don't think that's gonna be what we expect there's only been one non-pole position performance from Benneka and going on now two full seasons of this championship that trend seemingly continuing can he Mark yet another victory today. He won half the races in 2021. And Lewis, outside of what happened at Road Atlanta and the blip at Singapore, he's been perfect so far. I'm sure he wants that to continue too. Yeah, and like we said, especially that, that blip at Singapore wasn't his doing. It was this man doing. Yuri Toman got into the rear end of him and uh, and sent him out a little bit wider land, Patrick Holtzman, to come through. So, um, you know, yeah, that was the first major blip, uh, really. Benek has just been so strong, especially since we've moved uh, Pekti on to um, Sport as well. He's been so, so immensely fast in this championship. He's been immensely fast on Sport. He's definitely up there with uh, uh, being one of the fastest drivers on the platform. That is way too wide. You can see the disappointment from Toman. He did two wheels past those cones. This lap time will not count he is uh he's not happy he looks slightly happier than he did in sweden though so at least there's that uh yes uh that was some footage by the way that is why as well we i do appreciate a lot of what we do in eslr1 right where 
Well, we go and we capture the emotion, Lewis, right, of, of so much of what happens behind the scenes that we usually don't get to see. Yeah, you can see he's, uh, he's he's readjusting himself, getting himself ready for uh, for the next lap time. So it's the thing, you don't see this in, in real race cars. You don't see the driver's emotions and stuff. Um, you generally hear it on the radio. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, but no, you, you don't you don't see their faces. You can't see their eyes, but you know, obviously you don't, you don't see their emotions. In sim racing, you can actually see the driver's emotions and uh, and how they're feeling. And you can see there the disappointment as he went wide through T5, as you know, we've seen before in the SLR1 from, uh, from Yuri Toman. Uh, right now, though, he needs a good lap if he wants to get himself ahead uh, of Benneker. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to be able to. It's a lot of curb taken at T1. And yeah, they're being very, very aggressive now as they head into these closing stages. They've set decent times already. Now they're just trying to, to find some marginal improvement. You could see, that's where I was saying, down out of turn four into this turn five, you're almost straight lining it over the curb. That's a second mistake Moritz Lohner has made in this qualifying session. If there were any questions about how hard he was pushing, well, I think that should answer it right there. Probably a little concerning for Lerner to have uh, to have spun a couple of times in this session. Bearing in mind, you know the the race is uh, well, it's more than two laps, um, and you know he's had a, he's had a couple of spins in this session. So well, I'm sure he'll, he'll change his um, approach driving wise uh, to the race, but. Uh, bearing in mind we've not seen anyone else spin, we've not seen anyone else have any major issues in the session. Uh, it's only really been Morris Lerner pushing it maybe a little bit too hard. I'm enjoying seeing mistakes though, right? Because if you see oh, drivers being perfect, it means that they're, they're not necessarily at the edge. Whereas I think we can tell right now by Lerner's mistakes that the rest of the drivers are on the limit as well. But at least right now, either holding back just enough to avoid slipping or not really at one 100% uh, push as Toman still no improvement for him. Thibaut Casabon within 22 thousandths of Benneker, but still in second spot, who has not improved from the 18655 since the second flying lap time that he sent. Yeah, and I will say, um, you know, Yuri Toman does have the, 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 the pace to go even faster because even in the in the previous session, uh, so the previous time we were racing uh, uh, and we qualified here um, at Road Atlanta, Yuri Toman did do a 6.35. So there is potential for, uh, for Toman. Whoa, learner again. 10 out of 10. Well, that's that's, uh, that he, uh, he, he's driving interestingly this session. If you're not, tr if you're not crashing, you're not trying. I guess there's a quote there in sim racing. Not in real racing. Trying, then. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that in real racing, that is for sure. No, no. So you're saying that Benek is not, not trying because he's not crashed. Clearly. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. That's um, fair enough. No, he's their end. Cool. So I, think this, I think it's if you're not nearly crashing, then you're not trying. Yes. No, so that's really what it means. It. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm not skilled enough to save it when I'm nearly crashing. So, you know, for me, it's uh, if I'm not crashing, I'm not pushing hard enough. Timo Kazwon, 22 thousandths off. Will he find improvement this time by? Don't know if this is uh, a hot lap or if this is him just setting up to, to go once again. Again, we're not worried about resetting the tires, but in some ways, these are... These are grueling sessions, Lewis. 15 minutes of lap after lap after lap and always looking to see if you're improving and trying to find those opportunities for improvement. You may just back off for a lap to give yourself a break. I actually wouldn't like it as a driver because uh, it, just because the, the intensity. Um, you know, you're having to throw everything at it, basically every single lap, because you know that every lap, you know, you, you, your tires are in the window. I always kind of liked it when you, you go out, you do a couple of laps, you know, two, two laps, whatever, then you bring it back into the pit lane and you go out and you do a couple of laps. It's not just bam, 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 lap, 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 which is, you know, it's so, so immensely difficult as someone has binned it there. I believe it might be two sit uh, going out of T7. Oh, unfortunate to, to see that uh, not the only driver having issues is Moritz Sloaner, but again, goes to show we're on that limit. They don't see each other again, just to reiterate, if you're just joining us here, we get to see where they all are out on track for the benefit of knowing when the times are going to be set, but they get the track effectively to themselves as back underneath that Rennes Sport Bridge out of the Porsche chicane. We are going to call it that, at least for the rest of today. Nice. And down to the line. Mr. Casabon will run. No Porsche chicane to worry about on the main straight today, like we did in the final of our regular season. But yet again, no improvement for him. Still waiting for Yuri Toman to try and set a better lap time as well as he bounces through turn three. But, you know, for Benneker, uh, what was it last time we were here for qualifying? It was a 5.99, wasn't it? So he's half a tenth off. Still a very competitive lap time. It's just the conditions maybe slightly different here today. 
We look at this Delta coming in from uh, from Yuri Toman. He is green uh, on the Delta. You can see it on the uh, on the dashboard uh, to the right hand side of the gear under the uh, the timer that's counting up. But you can see how it's flashing back to black. Uh, that means that he is incredibly close to the previous lap time they set. It's going back into the orange. So he's got more time in that first sector, but can't quite find the pace he had in the early part of the session in this, or uh, well, particularly through turn six and seven. Uh, after this, he will get one more lap time. We'll see if he can find any time in the Porsche chicane. Uh, maybe he'll challenge, challenge his teammate uh, Thibaut Kazawam. Oh, it's blipped green, so it's a good initial break. Now, how does he roll that momentum off the corner? See the car's balance just get very light, sees the steering fade back to the left. This is going to be close to an improvement. He doesn't need much time as well. He just needs to find that little bit, try to take as short a, a distance to the line as possible. He found 200 of a second. It gets him to third. Kazabon pushes as well. He gets Whoa. to the top, 4,000th quicker. New pole sitter is the RAG driver. Mega lap time there from Thibaut Kazabon. Could he be ending this massive streak that uh, that Benek has had? Every single pole position in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland season here on Rennsport. Uh, and Benek might be just about to lose that streak. I don't think he'll care that much, but still, uh, it will be an important turning point, especially for Kazabon. He definitely wants to secure second in the championship. It did look like he looked quite happy and relieved with that lap as he came across the line. Now, does Benneker have it in him to respond? Four thousands isn't asking for much, but he hasn't been able to find it now for about 10 minutes. That's Casabon done. Where's Benneker now on track? You know, I kind of wonder, I don't know, is he, I was going to say, is he out on circuit? Well, he's into the final chicane right now as he drops down the hill and plummets this 80-foot drop as he heads into the final corner. Is there going to be any improvement from Maximilian Benneker? Is he going to steal it back away from Thibaut Casabon? Surely not. No, he is not. So that will that will confirm it because with only 10 seconds left to go, that's it. Thibaut Kaz won. Well, at least he's beaten Benneker. We know that. Maybe maybe someone might sneak a pole in the next five seconds. I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, it was the reaction across the line from Benneker. Just there was nothing. And I think it was the sign that, you know what? The streak's come to an end. And for the first time this season, a driver not named Max Benneker is on top. Thibaut Kaz won. Mathematically, the championship may already be done and dusted, but he's going to do everything he can to close out the season on a high and to lock in second place in the championship and grab 8,000 euros to his name. What a performance there. And look at him right now. He looks drained. He looks like he's sweating quite a bit as well. Well, that's why he does have uh, an air conditioning uh, unit mounted to a chair next to him so that he's always got a fan. Um, and to be fair, he's got a couple of fans in the commentary booth because we do like a little bit of Thibaut Kazabon. So that's, there's that at least. Uh, and I hope you do in chat. That was a very impressive lap time uh, from the RHG man. And uh, like I said, it was a really t a tricky one. I've got those gloves, by the way. Mine are signed by Roman Grosjean. Yeah, I do actually. Do you have all the boxes behind him that uh, he's cleverly using his advertising hoarding to hide? Uh, do you know I do, actually? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty of them as well. Uh, I was just having a little g giggle. I was building some computers recently, and so uh, he has a nice little smile as well. Gets relaxed as the drivers get a couple of minutes in a warm-up session. And, well, the final warm-up session of the season as we get ready to go. Lewis, it's been a fun season in many ways. Our championship already determined. And now I think that is going to, like Mitchell de Jong was saying in the Porsche brand store in Stuttgart, relieve it, the pressure on Benneker and on plenty of others as well. They didn't want to crash and impact the championship. Could that mean we're in for a bit, a bit of an interesting race? Uh, I hope so. I mean, look, let's be honest, right? Atlanta is normally, uh, as I say, it's a solid one. I'd hope we're going to get a very solid and very interesting race. As I say it would be nice to end it um, with the best race of the season, but you never really know. I mean, we did have quite a lot of drama here at the end of the main season. So uh, is, is this a circuit which goes hand in hand with drama? Uh, I like drama here as well, especially when it involves weather. This is the track as... Uh, the, the, that most recently in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship saw a non-prototype car win. Of course, it was a Porsche back oh, in 2015. Long time ago. Long Nick Tandy, time ago. Nick Tandy behind the wheel? It was indeed. And I, I will say, I grew up in Singapore, so I know what monsoon rain looks like. Yeah. That was bad rain. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Good, good, great race, though. Again, uh, we do like a little bit of, uh, 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 of Petit Le Mans. I mean, uh, it's, it's one of those races that I definitely want to give it a go. Uh, but either way, there's your provisional results from qualifying.
Hopefully when it's not raining, uh, much like it wasn't today. But action at the front, surely going to beckon because Thibaut Casabon for the first time this season and for the first time since August of 2021, a driver not named Max Benica grabs pole position. Benica still, though, down in second by a very thin margin and Yuri Toman and Moritz Lohan. It's been the same front four at the front so far today, just now in a slightly different order. Lucas Matea pips Mikel Schmiedel for fifth and sixth positions with Christopher Dambitz then behind them and Nico Nuninghoff, Lucas Egger, Flavio Tusi and Joachim Thun making up the rest of the final starting grid of our 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland season. Mm. So it sounds quite sad to say that, Lewis. I'll be quite honest. Yes, it is. But again, we've had uh, we've had a great journey. Uh, again, we've had... Uh, it's, it's kind of one of those ones, the same as when you, you, you look at things like Formula One or um, you know, even some of like the, the, the Mark Marquez era in MotoGP. And stuff like that. When you have someone that's as dominant as a Max Benecker, you have to just kind of sit back and kind of, kind of just enjoy seeing someone this in control of a championship. There is, there is, it, it rarely happens. Like I, I say, it rarely happens. It happens a lot in in lower levels of sim racing where um, yeah, you know, you're not talking about the very very best going toe to toe. To see the very best uh, on the grid, you know, for at least from this region, um, going toe to toe, and it's still Benneker at the front of all of it. Yeah, it's um, yeah to see that level of domination. It's, it's it is rare. It is rare. And don't forget, if you're watching us on Porsche's Twitch, you can jump into the Twitch chat, vote with your channel points. Who's going to win this race right now? It's Thibaut Casabon that's running out to a bit of an advantage. Back Benneker being selected by a few, Loner being selected as well. But I definitely get the sense that it's not going to be all smooth sailing for the speed yellow machine. A couple of drivers having to uh, restart their game as well uh, in this quick warm-up session. So they're back in time. But, Lewis, for them, a little bit stressful of a situation. Never what you want to be going through when you want to be sat on the grid. Yeah, indeed. Uh, how many points do you have, by the way? How many channel points do you have on the... Uh, how much of a fan are you of, uh, of, of Porsche's Twitch? 8,800. Okay, well, I think we need to go all in uh, on who we think is going to win. Uh, Are we doing this? I well, see, so. I, want, I need to save some of mine so for no, the Super fine. Cup is the problem. Fine, then 2,300. That's how many points I've got. I'm, okay. going, I'm, I'm going straight in. I'm, I'm putting the vote in now. Let me do 2.3 as well. Cool. Um, and you know what? Uh, how do I oh, predict with a custom amount? Nice. Yes. Um, we know technology. Bam. I put my prediction in. Who did you go for? Uh, Thibaut Casabon. Nice. I didn't go for Thibaut Casabon. So I fine. know you didn't. <laughs> I, I'm I'm propping up Benneker here. Uh, someone is propping up Morris Lerner big time. 5,340 channel points being slapped his way. That's Paul uh, Smith. Is it all? Is it all Paul Smith? It is all Paul Smith. Wow, that is. Oh yeah, he said I put five k on my vote. I respect that, Paul. <laughs> oh dear, considering how much he's binned it, someone else is. Mate, it, he's now on nine thousand points. Morris Lerner is. Uh, he, he's clearly the one that's destined to win the final race of the championship, despite binning it time and time again. Hey, he is the better's favourite here on Porsche's Twitter. I do love these channel points, by the way, as well. Uh, I'm hoping that we, we get to use them more and more moving forward. We'll see the lights build, by the way. Watch for the top right corner of your screen when the drivers get their instructions. We're about 30 seconds away, though, Lewis, from this final race of the season. Uh, final thoughts, then, as we get ready to go. What do you think we're in for at the front? I'm, I know who you think's going to win. You've said it's Benica with your, with your prediction. Yeah. How does he get there? by overtaking not into the first corner i don't think he's going to be able to i think that we're going to see a nice start here from casabon but i think there's going to be a move down into the porsche chicane and that's where we're going to see the change for the win let's see here we go lights will build the engines will rev and for the final time this season we go racing in the porsche esports carrera cup deutschland championship may be already decided but who'll be most aggressive here at road atlanta single file instantly as they fly up through turn one Pitibo casamon that leads the way benneker then trying to fend off Yuri toman as they get ready to get onto the brakes bounce through turn three and file into the s's single file instantly at the front of the field Yep, no, uh, no bidding it from Moritz Lerner just yet. So uh, that's at least good for, uh, for Paul Smith's prediction. They work their way up towards T5, take a lot of the curb over on the left-hand side. Oh, a little bit wide there from Max Benneker. He's going to be feeling the pressure from Toman, who will want to go on the attack uh, almost immediately. You've got to remember it was an RHG 1-2 in both of the races uh, when we had them uh, earlier on uh, in the main season, that season finale of the main season. So uh, I know Toman wanted to get on the attack straight away. 
Yep, and again, Benneke didn't really get the chance to fight in race number one at the front, so he doesn't really maybe have as much of an understanding of where those opportunities are really going to present themselves. We'll see how he's going to force it down into the uh, Porsche chicane. No move within the top three. Instead, it's Lucas Matea up the inside of Moritz Lona. Doesn't get it slowed down in time, though, to really commit and get alongside. Crosses back underneath, underneath the Rangeport Bridge as you plunge down 80 feet of elevation a wonderful move by Matea to get forward to fourth that was absolutely epic from Matea to have timed that well here comes another one though as Lerner would look to the inside at t1 unable to make that one uh, stick now Schmiedel might be able to find his way past they work up and over the crest at two now into three uh, at the right hander at basically the top of the hill before we start dropping down once more through the s's section a little bit scary there for Morris Lerner epic move though from uh, from Matea that was just a perfect time cut back and it's, it's the type of ooh, it's a couple of cars run a little bit wide out through turn five it's the type of move that takes two to tango as well moritz loner looks a little bit uh i don't want to say defeated but looks a little bit worried right now as he's dropped down to fifth again remember we're talking about the fight for second and third in the championship tebow casbon looking comfortable to grab second Yuri Toman, if he can work his way forward past Benneke, would be in a pretty decent spot to maybe take third away from the Riviera Blue machine of Moritz Lohner. But at the front, 15 laps of racing, Kazabon looks quite comfortable. Don't think he's going to go defensive. Lohner goes to the outside and makes some contact into the Porsche chicane. Yeesh, it's all getting a bit sketchy and all that. And you can see even by uh, how much his, uh, his camera is shaking down there uh, you know, near his rig. I said a little bit, a little bit sketchy indeed. Uh, Schmiedel not able to pass in all of that. And look at this though, Danbeats. We've seen Danbeats and Schmiedel make a couple of bits of battling throughout the day, including in the very first round uh, of the evening back in the Hockenheim ring. And Danbeats is almost looking to make a move there in the uh, in the background was unable to do so but do you see how much air Schmiedel got what's happened to Danby it's actually no okay it's just a timing thing don't worry uh, he is still ahead of leaning off yeah no no uh the amount of travel that these cars sometimes get with two wheels up in the air is remarkable and you know when those wheels are in the air they're not on the ground you don't have contact to then grip and, and control the car so you find yourself with less ability to then force the car to do what you need it to so always keep that in mind with when you want to throw yourselves onto the curves Benica's closing back up at the very front though I thought for a moment that Casabon might be able to break away but we've seen in those first two races as the race stretched on it seemingly favored Benica we're not even halfway through already the gap's being brought down to less than three tenths of a second our oh, junior's talking about not even halfway through mate we're, we're all we're just approaching one fifth through this race so um nice maths uh benica like you say right on the attack we know how good he is on tires he's been phenomenal today was so good at spa on his tires but this is the whole thing of when you're that second car is it are, are you using more tires because of the dirty air that's being kicked off of that car ahead so that might mean that benica has got to go on the attack straight away uh paul smith's vote or, as to who he thought was going to win this race has dropped right the way down uh, obviously learner now uh, a good couple of seconds, three seconds off of the race lead. It's between you and me. And I've, I promise you, uh, in all of my years commentating and watching Max Benneke do a race, I have never wanted him to win a race more. And that's nothing against Thibaut Kazvon. That is everything against you. Oh, I see. Okay. I thought you were going a different way in that direction right. for a second. Uh, and then I see. Uh, well, you, what, you, what direction do you think I was going to go in? So you're going to go in the direction of, oh, you wanted Max Benneke to win three in a row just to win the oh, championship and continue a that. great run. No, it's just a oh, I don't care hatred. about that. I only care about being right. Hatred. Uh, Flavio Tusit has a drive-through penalty for a false start. He drops to the very back of the field, but ultimately it was really him, Egger, and Thunder that were fighting amongst themselves. And uh, Thunder and Egger are going to be left to fight now as they continue to work through this race. By the way, just factually, I'm correct. Uh, we're not halfway through this race. Benneke continues to close. Was that a mistake from Benneke yeah. to almost run into the back of the RHG driver? Yeah, he was way too deep there in the uh, in the Porsche chicane, just uh, not quite getting it uh, arrested. To be fair, didn't he? I can't remember what happened in his incident, but he had an incident down there when he was obviously trying to work his way through the field in oh, race two. Oh, he got two. punted, didn't he? I think he did. I, th I, I I can't remember. I, I, I don't want to be that guy. And it's, it's nothing against Benneke, but I was like, I'm pretty sure. Wasn't it Benneke's fault? I don't remember, though. Um, no, I, I, I feel I like that I round was basically all just the world against Benneke. So 
You could be right. Um, it, it feels so bad, but sometimes it's just, I'm just like, I don't know, it's an assumption. Benica has been involved in the internet. It must be his fault. That is not true. Um, so it's fine. Uh, I, 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 I don't remember. I can't, I can't remember correctly. I think he was quite aggressive coming through the field, but I cannot remember whether it was his fault or not. Um, and so I will sit on the fence and say, maybe. Maybe. Um, exactly. Uh, just seen another message come through, by the way. There's two, a couple of basic rules in racing, right? Rule number one, don't hit your teammate. Rule number two, when you serve a penalty, don't get another penalty. Flavio oh, Tusset's no. got a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Oh, no. It's that, like, uh, I mean, look, even the very best in sim racing have done it, like me. Um, it's easy to do. Anyway, here's the uh, the fight between uh, uh, is that between Lerner, Matea, Schmiedel behind again, Nuninghoff, uh, or Dambis rather, Nuninghoff a little bit too far back off the rear end of this trend. So is that three car fight now for fourth position? Lerner's not been like I say, he, he, I mean, he wasn't particularly strong here in the, uh, in the in the main season. Isn't strong now. That is very wide for Matea. Yeah, it might help him though. Matea finds himself slipping and sliding and holding up Mikel Schmiedel behind again. And again, remember three individual crashes for Moritz Lohner in the qualifying session. He was, uh, we saw Flavio Tusa maybe off wide at turn seven as well, but no one really pushing as much as Lohner was. So clearly not all at ease. And again, you could just see how much they almost pirouette at the top of turn five. Both Matea and Lona were pointed basically to the inside wall and had to save their car. They're losing time hand over fist to those in front. And there's a look from Schmiedel up the inside. Red line driver forces his way on forward. Watch Dan Beats get a good run off the corner as well on that run down into the chicane. Yeah, we're going to get maybe a, a bit a bit of two wide, maybe even a little bit of three wide going down to that Porsche chicane in the braking zone as they come up and over the crest, uh, which they're coming up towards now. The defensive line's being taken by Schmiedel. Matea is going to go to the right hand side and to the outside of the first part of that chicane but look who's following them through uh, Dan Beats following basically the perfect line uh, from Smedo and Mateo is going to actually drop back behind uh, Dan Beats uh, and now into seventh position I think he didn't really want to fight that one too hard to be honest uh, done the math by the way Moritz Lohner has now got to close to Yuri Toman there was one point between the two of them coming into this uh, final race of the finals now the difference between third and fourth in points two points it's literally going to come down to them who finishes in third as to who grabs five thousand euros and third in the championship and oh don't forget out front benica's closed on casabon as well and now down within four tenths as well come on i've got 2300 channel points riding on this come on benica make something happen although to be fair i would like to see tebow casabon win he's clearly i wonder if casabon then i mean he's clearly he's quite good around here and like i said he's been fantastic this evening second place second place and looking now for a race victory Three. Is Yuri Toman out of this this battle for the race win though? What do you think? Yes. Do you yes. think he is completely out of it? You don't think he's got the pace? You think he's got the tires to bring himself back into this? But even if those two fight, so I'm just trying to think back to what happened when we came here uh, for the regular season race. It was close in both, but I don't ever feel as though Thibaut Casabon felt too much pressure from Yuri Toman. So I don't. One and a half seconds between first and third is not a big gap. I just want to make sure I'm clear there. But in a race as short as this, I think it's too big for Yuri Toman to really make himself known. And unless Benner could cost Kazab on time, yeah, I don't think so, Lewis. I don't think so. No, no, me neither. I don't know. It's, it's just, it's fascinating. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, at the moment, it does seem as though it is going to be a two-horse race. We are now, uh, as, as Arjuna did call it, pretty early uh, that we hadn't quite halfway reached through. the halfway point uh, we have now passed oh we have now passed the halfway point so uh, we're halfway in half a lap or well, technically halfway in a lap now yeah and at, at that point as well right this is where Benneke usually would start pulling away in those first two races Kazman holding on quite decently to his tyres underneath him is back out of the tight of the 90 degree right hander at turn 7 they go and apparently we're turning through turn eight right now we're going to get ready to go through turn nine and so that means the next time we're on the brakes we'll be through turn 10 uh, a and turn 10 b sorry i couldn't help myself lewis i had to just uh it's the porsche chicane yeah the porsche chicane what a great name for a corner um can we name every corner up at this track after a different porsche would that get too confusing that would get too confusing okay because well, i mean it's a lot of numbers isn't it also you well no you You'd have a Boxster, you'd have a Cayman, you'd have a, a, a McCann, a Taycan. 
yeah, but then, you know, 9-11, you know, so then it's just, uh, it's, You notice how I tried to avoid all of those specifically, but you're exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The thing, they're, they're, they're the more... If you couldn't have a circuit where you'd named all the corners after Porsches and then not have a 911. Yes, but you know what you sh you could do is uh, you have to just go to tracks with few corners, so you don't have to have that many, you know, corner names to then work from. Because if you had to do this exercise at the Norschleifer, oh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, and remembering any uh, any of the corner names at Norschleifer at the best, you know, it's, it's hard at the best of times. Well, um, that's why they don't individual corners don't have names, and they just it's very sections, cleverly, yes. yeah, sections instead, which you know, genius. <laughs> they just they put. Hats and back, and they've just gone. It's there, and you go. Which corner is it? And they go. Wow, well, yeah. It's all of them. <laughs> when does it end? I know. Never. Figure it out. You figure it out. And when does it turn into Hock Icon? Just you'll, you'll figure it out. It's fine. Whatever you feel like it. It's a, it's a it's a vibes kind of thing. Um, yeah, which I, I like. I do I do like I do like some some corners do actually have like actual like that it is here. Sabine Schmidt curve, for example. Yep, you're right. Yep. Uh, even Flugplatz. Like, you couldn't say Flugplatz is like a whole section. It's like, no, it's it's the crest and then the two right handers are, or the, the, the double right hander afterwards. But you've just proven your point wrong because it's literally multiple corners. Fine. Come Schrenken on, Lewis. Schwedenkreuz. There you corner. go. Ironbergs, one corner. There you go. Good Come examples on, now. Corner. Giri Toman into the fight for second because Max Benneker, maybe counterintuitively and counter to what we expect. Dropping backwards from Thibaut Casamont. One RAG driver trying to make a break for the hills. The other one putting the pressure on to our champion elect as out of turn five. Look how wide they get. Not too unsettled though for either of them. As next time by, five laps left to go. Look, if Benneker doesn't uh, win this race, either he or his number one fan um, owes me 2,300 channel points. Which, to be fair, I, I, I would be shocked if, um, if Horses and Porsches, again, number one fan of, uh, of, of, of Max Benneker, didn't put down a maximum amount of channel points on Benneker for that, because that would just be disappointing. Um, so it's fine. Anyway, let's see if there's going to be a switch position. Let's see if Yuri Toma might make this an RAG 1-2 once more. Dust close, looks to the inside. Oh, but they will go neck and neck. Benneker wants to fight it around the outside and pinch. Toman on the inside, but as they switch off the corner, not able to get the cutback is the number 18 mint green machine. Back down underneath the Rensport Bridge and to the line with five laps to go. That gap at the front now, up to one and a half seconds. And I think any draft benefit gonna be pretty minimal now. Might see lunges for the next five laps down into the chicane in this fight. Casabon's got this. If he doesn't make a mistake, if he doesn't go full Morris Lerner, uh, yeah, he's, he has this uh, this race set and sorted. Uh, he's flying 1.3 seconds clear. Again, I think there is that whole thing. If you are the second car in line, you just use too much of your tyres. That was what probably is, has you know made Casabon um, struggle so much of the day. Which kind of makes you wonder, had Casamon found that extra you know, two tenths uh, across the previous two qualifying sessions, could he have uh, maybe even won those two races? You know, is qualifying the, the major fact uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this championship? I like this format as well, I will say. I, I enjoy regular championships where, you know, you just have one race at the end of the season. I've quite enjoyed, you know, whittling it down to, to, to just 12. Unfortunately, Enzo Benito not joining us today. And then having these three special races with the, the form book from the, the, the regular season, if you will, still carried forward in the points of uh, the, the carried over points that we that we worked from at the start. So I really enjoyed the way this championship has sort of developed. And I'm sure that we'll continue doing some new formats as uh, we've even done in the Porsche Esports Super Cup with the mid-season tournament. And today, championship finale going to be a double main event, which means technically more points on the line, even if just two drivers are in contention. Four to go out of turn one. Still term and closing one and a half seconds up front. Yeah, exactly. It really is the battle, though, for uh, for second spot in all of this. I think there's a switch behind, though, as... Uh, or there might have been some, uh, again, the issues that we've seen from Schmiedel, uh, where he's dropped kind of back behind Dan, but that's only timing. He returns into uh, into fifth position. I think he's avoided the idea of getting a, a time penalty in this race. He's doing a five-second time penalty to end um, proceedings back in Spa. Uh, so, anyway, uh, what I was going to say is, obviously, as you, uh, you, you kind of alluded to, uh, about Lerner. If Lerner doesn't catch up to the back of Toman, ooh. If it's Lerner one point. Up, if, if Lerner doesn't catch up to the back of Toman, it's one point. So would Benneker slow Toman down? 
Oh, just saying. These are the big brain, brain strategies that sometimes, you know, you do end up uh, seeing. It's not, and it might not even be an intentional slowing down, right? If they just fight side by side, that can hold you up a couple of tenths of a second per corner and suddenly Lona could be into the fight. The other thing to consider, right, from Yuri Toman's perspective is if he can get in front of Benica and then give himself a bit of a buffer, then that's even more of an advantage in his direction because Moritz Lona climbing up to third then, that still wouldn't be enough for Lona to hold on to third in the championship. So 5,000 euros at stake here between two top-level drivers and Max Benneker, even though the championship might already be his, might still have a part to play in the rest of the stories. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there might be a little bit of you know, holding up, maybe a little bit from from Benica. But if he was doing it intentionally to allow Lerner to close in, he would have slowed down a lot more um, than what he would have done. And just to clarify again, I made the joke earlier. I'm still going to keep making it because again, I think it was a really stupid ruling. Um, but there is no 20 second penalty um, for for what Benica may be doing if we're if we're, if what we're suggesting is absolutely fine. It's within the rules. Uh, maybe classifies. Maybe it's not that sport. But I actually think it's fine. In, in this scenario, when it's the last race of the season, I think it's absolutely fine. Is Toman going to get close? He shapes up for the move once again, but he needs half a car length more on the exit to then take the draft and make it side by side. Two to go this time by. 1.5 plus now at the front. Thibaut Casbon's looking comfortable. My channel points looking comfortable as well. Question mm -hmm. still sits behind, though. Benneker, Toman to very, very strong drivers in cars that don't give them much assistance. Tires, they've already run a decent amount of laps, a track which you really have got to push around as much as you can. Benneker doing just enough to hold on as the flames continue to spit out the back, but you talked earlier about how much air sometimes they get. I get worried sometimes about how much curb they use that it's going to unsettle the car and slightly over-rotate them. Yeah, especially here at C5. You know, if you take quite a lot of that curb on the left-hand side, it can over-rotate the car. You see how much as they uh, they come over the crest at 5 where you've got that curb. Um, uh, once that ends, you get onto the escape road. That can also unsettle the car quite dramatically. So, yeah, there are a few places around here where you can really unsettle um, these, uh, these these cars. No uh, no attempt coming in from Lerner. We're on the Pinot on my lap of the race. I don't think Lerner's going to be able to close in. I think that the, the top three in the points may be Benneker, then Kazabon, then Toman in all of it. As it sits right now, one lap to go. Yuri Toman doesn't have to force the issue. Is he going to get that memo, though? Because he's closer than he's been on the last handful of laps. Not close enough, though, to go for it. And once again, Mick Green Machine holds on in third spot. One more lap left in this 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland season. And it ends where the regular season started here at the Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Thibaut Casabon at the front of the field. 1.5 seconds clear as Benneker still rides behind. It's only going to be down into that Porsche chicane, really, where we're going to think about a move, right? Yeah, exactly. There's no real other opportunity on the circuit that's that's safe. Uh, also, I've got to say, for, for Yuri Toman, obviously, if he gets through, sure, he's in second position. It's an RHG 1 2, but then you have to talk about what does he gain from this? He doesn't, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, he gains more points, but he's still going to be the same position in the championship. So it's kind of like. Why risk it so aggressively? You know, you play it within the within the, the within the form book, within what you're actually capable of. Sure, give it a go. I'm not saying that he's not going to go for it. But if the gap's like this going down into the Porsche game, there's no way on this earth that Yuri Tomi is going to risk anything because he will lose a lot of money in doing so because, let's be honest, Lerner's right there. Absolutely. You definitely don't want to be giving up that third place in the championship as a result of a desperation send on the final lap through the final couple of corners. But, you know, the story of the season has in many ways been dominant. Only three drivers have won races. Max Benneker, the first three rounds were all his. Round four, the first time the streak was broken when Patrick Holtzman came out on top and then Thibaut Casabon grabbed the victories when we were here at Road Atlanta. He'll win the final race of the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. But back-to-back -back championships, Max Benneker reigns supreme on top in the 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. Yeah, indeed. But uh, yeah, Thibaut Casbon taking that win once again shows he's actually pretty good around here. It has a 100% uh, win record uh, at the Road Atlanta, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, of course, in the Porsche Carrera, Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. So uh, that's great for, for Casbon. But it's kind of one of those ones, whoever wins the season finale, it almost doesn't really matter because you're always going to be overshadowed by the champion himself. And uh, that is Benneker and very, very well deserved.
And uh, surprisingly, no smile on his face just yet, but I think when he gets the chance to chat with uh, Lewis McLeod, uh, Unfortunately, that's, that's not going to put a smile on his face, but maybe Lewis's questions might at the very least. No, 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 no. You don't think no, so. No. no. No, no. I think the idea that, you know, of him being champion, yeah, obviously that will. Uh, but talking to me about it, no, probably not. Sorry. Sozzles, as the cool kids say. It's Champions Day, of course. Let's not forget another champion to be crowned in a couple of hours' time in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. So make sure you're sticking around here on Porsche's Twitch for all of that action. But we'll grab a look at our results and then we'll go chat to some of the drivers and wrap up the 2024 season. It's been an interesting one. In many ways, we knew who the champion, I think, was going to be before we even entered the day. Predictable outcome. And behind Benneke, it is Kazabon second, and it is going to be uh, Yuri Toman third, Moritz Lona fourth. I mean, Lewis, as we as we get ready to talk to the drivers, fun season. Do you think that final race could have gone any differently? Thibaut Kazabon looked pretty comfortable, I think, for most of it. No, I mean, look, I still think, yeah, obviously Benneke had the pace to do it, but then the thing is that we were always talking about um, Royal Atlanta's not, not his strongest track. He doesn't like the super, super bumpy circuits. Because um, even when we said we went racing at Orchard Road, which is a street circuit, he, he still said that the, the surface of the road was still fairly smooth. Now, Royal Atlanta is very bumpy generally, and it doesn't really quite work for um, Benneke's driving style. He was kind of talking about that in the, uh, the post-race interview at Monza uh, back in the main season. So... I, I still expect him to, to maybe challenge for the victory, but it's no major shock that Thibaut Kazimon won. I think it does hammer home the point, though, that when we were talking about the main season and Thibaut Kazimon taking that double victory, that we were we, we kind of hint at the fact that even if um, there was a technical problem for Bentnicker, would Kazimon still have won the race? Would he still be competing for the race? I think with that race, it tells you all. Well, here is our season champion standing by with Lewis. Indeed, I do have Max Benneker here, series champion. Didn't win the last race, but did win the other two. How are you feeling now after all that? Uh, hey guys, uh, yeah, very relieved, uh, obviously, after after a long season and uh, with a points reset, uh, you go into the final without knowing anything, really. Um, so yeah, very relieved um, to, to uh, have scored those two victories. And then in the end, I think it was like a free roller for me in the last race because we were only 11. So uh, even with a two points finish on, on P11, um, that should have been it. So um, yeah, just very relieved and uh, happy that I can get out of the rig now because we had an update like two days ago and like we were grinding like crazy uh, for like 12, 13 hours a day because uh, yeah, the car was just driving very differently to what we were used to before. Um, so yeah, glad it worked out, but obviously a bit gutted for, for Moritz. He had a very good season and now um, he had quite the opposite today um, with missing out on, on P3 in the end. So yeah, unlucky there. Now, considering back in Monza, you were kind of saying about how the, the, the Red Atlanta was the one you were a little bit concerned about because of the bumps, because of all this, that, because of all that. Uh, was it then, it, were you coming into the day knowing that it was really, really important for you to, to kind of have this as, as close to being wrapped up as possible after the first two races at circuits we know you're very strong at? Uh, not particularly. I mean, going into all three races, I knew that the pace was there probably. I mean, we haven't seen the pace of the others, but at that moment, you, you kind of like know where you are, right? Just by by the feeling of the car. Um, so pace was there on Road Atlanta as well. Uh, I had a good lap and then in the final attempt, just didn't didn't make it in the end through the last sector. Um, but yeah, I think the performance on, on Road Atlanta is just not very nice, but it's, it's the same for everyone. So I think we have a lot of stutters and like it's very bumpy and I think the bumps are a bit too accelerated. So it, like everything shakes is crazy. You go over a curb and you feel like, I don't know, World War II is there again or something. It's it's really crazy. So um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, obviously, but still it's good to have done the job in the first two races because then you can just, you know, relax in the third one and you know Road Atlanta is a bit, Bit, a bit ran like I, I don't want to say random but it is kind of random because like if, if you hit that one bump just a bit better than someone else then you gain like half a tenth or so so and, and that's a big gap so obviously yeah not my favorite track uh, on rain sport um hopefully um it, it gets a bit better performance wise and then let's see in the future well speaking of the future obviously we still got a long way to go in 2024 what are we expecting from you and from mouse uh, until the end of 2024 what, what are you going to be racing in what are you going to be up to you know where can we kind of follow you around in the sim racing world yeah i mean we're, we're going to be around you know um uh, let's see what's uh, what's uh, going to happen i mean obviously um the esports world cup was uh, announced just last week i think so that's that, that's like the big one for us this year and then afterwards let's see there's um limo ultimate out there um as well coming up with a series hopefully and then um 
yeah, maybe some event there, some event here. Um, we just have to see how it works out with the schedule. But we're around and um, yeah, just open up a new facility in, in Hamburg, which is uh, yeah, pretty crazy. Um, not yet for, for public, but it's going to be open, I think, in May. So if you want to visit, uh, I think you can feel free to uh, be invited with, uh, with uh, yeah, with this now. <laughs> Well, there we go. Max giving us the, the scoop as a series champion. Congratulations. I'm sure whatever you race in, I'll probably be uh, commenting on you, following you around. So you're not getting rid of me anytime soon. <laughs> well, <laughs> sad. No. Uh... <laughs> Thanks, Max. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, let's boot him out of here. Uh, he's won the championship. He's now dead to us. Let's bring in Thibaut Kazabon, though. Uh, a very worthy drive to second in the championship. But an amazing day, to be perfectly honest. Uh, second, second, and then ending it with a, a race victory. You're really carrying that form on uh, that you ended the main season on in, uh, in, in Road Atlanta. That was, that was an incredible performance. How are you feeling? Hey, honestly, uh, first of all, uh, congrats to Max. Honestly, he deserved the champ. He was flying from the start to the end. And yeah, uh, today was very good for me. Um, honestly, I did all my PB on every track <laughs> in quality, so this is good. And yeah, P2, uh, P3 is joy, so this is uh, the maximum we can do uh, watching the, the pace from Max, so very happy. That pole lap that you did at Road Atlanta, obviously you really snuck it in there, only beating by uh, by a few thousandths uh, of a second over uh, over Max. Uh, how, I mean, we we saw your reactions that came across the line. How did that feel in the moment? That must have been uh, incredibly uh, heart racing. Yeah, because I know that it was very close. Uh, I know that I was improving, but not enough. And uh, when I was on the line, I didn't know that I was improving enough or not. So when I was watching the lap, I was. <coughs> You won for the first time. Wow, that's mega. So yeah, very happy. Are you finding more time on uh, on, on Ren Sport? Because obviously, you know, you, it's, it's a platform that you've raced on quite a lot. You're obviously, joining about halfway through ESLR one. Uh, you know, we've seen you get faster and faster through ESLR one, and of course, here in the uh, Porsche Sports Career Cup Deutschland. Are you finding more time round to round, or is it still fairly consistent? Honestly, for now, um, I'm still at the school, so I miss a bit of time of practice. So I'm practicing the, the evening uh, when I can, and uh, now I'm practicing the same time like six months ago. So yeah, just uh, I think I am understanding more the game and yeah, driving and driving. This is never the end, so I think this is just, just the key to, to, to drive and to drive. Yeah. Well, Timo, we'll let you go. Very well done on second place in the championship. A very incredible performance. Thank you. Not the only RHE driver that we we're catching up with, because of course it's Yuri Toman's time to throw himself into the interview room. Hello, Yuri. Third place. Uh, how are you feeling about that? Is that is that a good, or were you kind of expecting a challenge for the uh, for the win? Yeah, what, what was the vibe coming into this? Uh, to be honest, at the beginning of the season, I was expecting to uh, be fighting for the championship. Uh, but uh, yeah, to be honest, the car didn't really suit me all that well. So uh, in the end, it was it was tough to uh, get used to the get used to the car, get up to pace all the time. It was always 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 missing a bit uh, to Max mostly. Uh, but yeah, today uh, Thibaut did a great job as well. He had mega pace. I think he did uh, hot, uh, his PB every single every single track. So yeah, uh, today he was amazing, and it was kind of uh, I was fighting with Moritz, which was exciting all three races. So yeah, in the end it was very close, and I'm I'm kind of happy for P3 actually, because yeah, uh, wasn't uh, it wasn't easy at all to to actually get it. In ESLR one, you were no always known as being like one of the smoothest uh, in the car, particularly with you know with tire wear and stuff. We discussed this quite a lot, especially in your battles earlier on in the season between you and, uh, and 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 Max. What's the difference in this car? Because you haven't seemed quite as um, uh, as well in control of those tires. Yeah, it's. I think it's a bit trickier than the GT3. Uh, this cup car is a bit. Yeah, it's even more sensitive. You have to be even more careful. And I'm not really. Yeah, I don't really feel that much uh, when the grip is like getting lost on the rear, and that's exactly the point where the, where the tire is getting degraded. So, uh, yeah, it was it was always tough. Uh, I was getting better at it uh, as the season went on, uh, but yeah, I I have to admit that yeah, I, I struggled a bit actually more in race than than in quality. I would say throughout the season. And throughout today, you've seen a certain person on circuit quite a few times. That would be uh, Morris Lerner. I uh, saw some great battles, though. I mean, uh, talk to us about those. A bit of fun out on the circuit? Or was that kind of a bit stressful, a bit hard work? Obviously, you know, being, Morris's, uh, being Max's teammate. Uh, yeah, of course, it was stressful at... Uh 
at the time, but also yeah, very very fun because I think it was very fair. Uh, we had some touches, but it was like borderline, let's say. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed. I think we we had a fight all three races, or no, not not the last one because uh, yeah, more it's got passed. But yeah, we were basically all the time fighting for the P3. I guess we we knew that uh, P2 is a bit a bit further away. Uh, so yeah, it was very stressful, but I enjoyed it a lot, and yeah, it was great fighting. Perfect, Yuri. Again, congratulations on third place. And again, for you, your teammate, both inside the top three. An incredible performance uh, from the pair of you. Cheers. Thank you. There we go, Arjuna. Uh, now you can see some points. Oh, Max, Max is pretty good on this, though. Look at this. That's a terrifying gap. It's a pretty large margin after just three races in the books. But I think credit to Thibaut Kazabon. Look at the back, gap back to Toman and Loner as well. One point between the two of them. I'm sure Moritz Lohner is going to feel a little bit frustrated that the season's effort not playing out the way that he would have wanted. But ultimately, this is the level, Lewis, at this in this competition. We are at the top of sim racing. With these drivers, there's no room for mistakes. And it was apparent that Moritz Lohner may be not the most comfortable at Road Atlanta. And one point, the difference, one position, the difference at the end of the day between them. Yeah, and we've spoken about the uh, the money that they gain for the for being in the top three. But it's not just that. They do also gain uh, those special liveries that you were talking about a little bit. There is a look at them. Obviously, very uh, Porsche Sports Crow Cup uh, Deutschland. But then with a little bit of a checkered flag uh, put on top. I think it is right, though, that uh, obviously, uh, number one, Speed Yellow. It makes sense that it goes to, uh, it does go to Max Bennett. Well, that's not speed yellow. That's like gold. It's no, like... that's speed yellow. 100% no, that's speed yellow. No, that is speed gold, I think we'll find. It's more, there's like a, there's a, a, a chrome metallic element to it. That's definitely different than the speed yellow. Uh, but, I uh, need the hex key. We need yeah, the hex code. Gold. Uh, there you go. It's gold. <laughs> there you go. Lewis, you and your colors. You just... Well, no, I, I will say it is 100%. It is definitely gold in that photograph, but I wonder if the hex key is that different from Speed Yellow because I will say Speed Yellow in that showroom does look a little bit gold as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sitting on the fence on both of them. I can tell you something. It definitely isn't orange. It's definitely not orange. I will agree with you on that. No. What I'm hoping, by the way, is that my mouse hoodie is going to make me maybe be a second off Max Benneker at Spa Lewis. I'm going to jump onto Rangeport after this and try and give it a good old go. But great season now in the books. Benneker's uh, sounds like he's not sure where his future is going to lie. I think he's going to be hoping this season uh, championship returns so he can defend his crown from this season. But we look forward to, I'm sure, what's going to be plenty more racing here on Porsche's Twitch and in the future on Rangeport in the coming year. Yeah, indeed. Like I said, there's, there's a lot to come. There's a lot uh, you know, that we'll be seeing racing-wise. Very curious to see where we're going to see uh, Benneke Red Double. We're going to see like Yuri Toman and Thibaut Kasbon. Uh, you know, obviously, hopefully in, in, in future championships, of course, when we see them go racing, maybe in the Esports uh, World Cup, see Marcel Chinchik back in for the RHG team that's so incredibly strong on this. You know, Mouse. Um, by the way, a bit, bit of a shout-out to Patrick Holtzman, who did win a race throughout the main season, but wasn't able to join us here uh, this evening. wonder what he could have been able to uh, to do uh, in the season finale. I, don't know, I think we're in, a, we're in a positive time. We've got a lot to talk about with Range Sport. Got plenty to come. Uh, obviously, a lot of it's yet to be announced. So, yeah, who knows? Who knows, indeed. But what we do know is in about two hours' time, come back here to Porsche's Twitch when uh, we will get the action underway with the Porsche All-Stars and then the final of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup for 2024 here live at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. So do make sure you come and join us for all of that. To learn more about this championship, head on down to pecd.racebot.tv to see all of what the drivers have been through, see some results and stats as well. But for our team behind the scenes, so everyone at race spot, everyone behind the scenes at Porsche. And for Lewis McLeod alongside myself, Arjuna Kanki Party, thank you so much for your company across the season. Congrats to Max Benneker, your 2024 Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland champion.